Hello and welcome to this core on Spring Core. So this is an introductory Spring course. It covers core Spring concepts. In this course, we will explain the concepts and we will have uh, live coding. Welcome to this course. Who is this course for? So this course is for anyone who is interested to learn Spring particularly Spring core concepts. Then any Java developer who wants to enhance their skill set on Spring. And this course is also a quick refresher for experienced Spring developers. What all we need uh, to follow along with this course, Java knowledge, as Spring is a Java based framework. So a uh, basic understanding of Java is required. So you must be familiar with the concept of class, object-oriented programming, inheritance, Java collections, and so on. You should also know uh, about Apache Maven. So Apache Maven is a dependency management tool. So in this project, we'll be managing our Spring dependencies through Apache Maven. So we do not need um, uh, too much understanding about Maven. So the uh, basic understanding of Maven, like what is a POM file, what is dependency, it should be fine. Uh, basic understanding of XML. So Spring bin configuration files can be written in XML. So a basic understanding of XML is required. So we, we do not expect uh, too much of uh, understanding of XML. So basic understanding such as uh, what is XML file, what are different XML tags, the root tag, and uh, attributes should be fine. What all uh, components we need uh, in this project? So we definitely need JDK. So Java we would be requiring in you know, order to write our code. We need Apache Maven. We need Spring. We need uh, uh, one IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So we'll be using two IDEs throughout this course. Uh, the first step of this course, we will be using Spring Tool Suite. And in the second half of this course, we will be using IntelliJ IDEA. So we will be using Spring Tool Suite because STS provides uh, support for XML uh, configuration files. So it will be pretty handy. So what all components we are going to cover in this course? In this uh, starting module, we are providing the introduction. And then in the next module, we will be setting up our development environment. Following to that, we will be introducing uh, Spring Core concepts. Uh, next, we will be uh, doing XML based configuration. So, we will be writing our beans and uh, we will be instantiating the uh, container, Spring IOC container, and we will try to access our POJOs and all those things. In module 5, we will be auto wearing beans. We will be seeing how uh, Spring can automatically wear the beans. Then in the next module, we'll be seeing Java-based configuration. Following to that, we'll be loading external files. Then in module eight, we'll learn about Spring expression language, which is uh, Spell. We'll then discuss about Spring AOP. Spring AOP is uh, one another way of programming. AOP stands for aspect oriented programming. So we are familiar with OOP. OOP is object oriented programming. AOP is aspect oriented programming. In OOP we deal with object and object communications. In AOP we generally deal with aspect. So we will see uh, more about AOP in, the, in this module, Spring AOP. Then we will learn about Spring Task Executor different type of executors which Spring provides. Then we'll deal with uh, handling events, so how beans can communicate with each other through different type of events. And then in the last module, we'll be concluding this course. What all we won't be covering in this course? We'll not cover core Java. Since this is a Spring course and Spring is a Java framework, we expect you to know core Java. We will not cover Maven 
because in this project we will be using Maven only to manage our dependency. We will not, uh, we do not need too much of understanding of Maven. We will not cover Spring Boot. We will also not cover any other Spring modules such as Spring MVC, Spring JDBC, Transaction, JMS, or JPN, all those things. So in this module, we introduce you to this course. We provide the tools we require in order to follow along with this course. And then we discuss who is this course intended to. Then we provided a brief walkthrough about the different modules. And then we talked about what all components we won't be covering in this course. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next module. Welcome to module two of Spring Core series. In this module, we'll be setting up our development environment. So as part of the environment setup, we'll be doing installing Java. We will be installing Spring Tool Suite, and then we will be installing IntelliJ IDEA. So let's get started. In this lecture, we will be installing Java. So head over to the browser. So currently, I am in uh, Oracle website page. Here, uh, go down and look for uh, Java version. So we have Java SC Development Kit JDK 12 and download JDK 12 now. So as of this recording, JDK 12 is available and we are going to use JDK 12. Though in this course, we need uh, JDK 7 and above. But since JDK 12 is available, let's download the latest version. So once we go to this index page, here we have all the versions, Java SC 12, Java SC 11, Java SC 8, head over to Java Platform Standard Edition 12. And then uh, we have download option for all the versions, Java SC 12, Java SC 11. Java SC 11 is the long term support version. As I, but as I said, we, we are not um, interested in our specific Java version. We just need uh, JDK 1.7 and above. So that should be fine. Let's go to Java 12. In this page, we have uh, the download option. So we have for uh, Java for Linux, Java for Mac OS, and Java for Windows. Uh, before downloading, we have to accept the license agreement. And now we can download uh, based on our operating system. In this course, we are following uh, with Windows. Um, so most likely, we need to download uh, the Windows version. Uh, already, I have downloaded Java and installed in my system. So I'm going to skip this step. Thank you. In this video, we are going to install Spring Tool Suite. So Spring Tool Suite is a Eclipse-based IDE. If you are a Java programmer, uh, you definitely heard of Eclipse. So Eclipse is the IDE for Java-based uh, coding. So Spring Tool Suite is based on Eclipse. Uh, it is customized for Spring development. So Spring team has taken Eclipse as base, and then it is heavily customized for uh, Spring. Uh, so different Spring nature is added, uh, and it is um, it is mainly for Spring. It is freely downloadable from uh, this uh, Spring website. It is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Let's head over to uh, spring.io uh, website to download Spring Tool Suite. So currently, I am in uh, spring.io uh, website. Here, we have the option to download Spring. We can download Spring uh, STS for Linux. We can download Spring STS for Windows. And we can download Spring STS for Mac OS. So based on your operating system, uh, you can download the version. Uh, since I have already downloaded this, I'll skip this download uh, part. So I have already downloaded uh, Spring Tool Suite. And I have extracted it. So you can follow the same download and then extract. Once it is extracted, head over to uh, the uh, Spring Tool Suite version. So current version as of this recording is 4.3.1. We will be using this version. And then let's head over to Spring Tool Suite 4 and uh, open this tool. So 
initially it will ask to select a workspace so by default uh, for me this workspace is selected i'll continue with it and then we are launching spring tool suite it again it will take a while to initialize the workspace so here is the spring tool suite console uh, so let's just uh, go through it in the left side we have package explorer so all our uh, project and related information will be here this is the area where we have um, where we will be having all our uh, java files as well as xml files and other configuration files uh, this part is for spring boot so anyway we are not using uh, spring boot in this course so this part will be of uh, no use for us this is the area where it actually um, shows all uh, those things if if your project is having any problem it will be displayed here uh, we can read our java doc at this place and then declarations and then console so console will be useful will be coming here again so all our outputs will be shown here and the progress tab in the progress we'll have uh, a different progress information such as uh, for example once we build the application or once we run uh, our program or um, for example once maven is building or the class uh, project is getting built all those progress information will be shown here now here is one catch i have downloaded spring tool suite 4 and i as i said earlier we are using spring tool suite in this course uh, first part of this course because in the first part we will be dealing with xml based configuration so in xml based configuration we will be writing our uh, spring definition file uh, which is in xml and then we will be defining different beans and um, all those so initially spring had a uh, good support for the xml files you can directly create the xml file and you can select the namespaces and all those stuff but as i found out uh, spring tool suite 4 has actually removed that um, support xml support which you can actually find in this uh, github uh, issues so xml config support in spring sts uh, is version 4 so some they have reported an issue so we have found one uh, uh, shortcut uh, spring actually uh, provides um, a plugin normally spring tool suite 3 which was the previous version was having this support so we can actually have that sts3 plugin and then we can um, still uh, get access to uh, that particular uh, xml configuration and xml nature so Eclipse Marketplace, uh, we'll have all those plugins and things here. We can download uh, different type of plugins. So our STS3 plugin will also be available here. It takes some time to initialize. So it's uh, it got initialized currently. Let's search for STS3. So STS3, as I searched, uh, so there are uh, two plugins, uh, Spring Tools 3 add-on for Spring Tools 439.0. This, this one as well as this one i have already installed this um so what we will do is uh, once once you see you have will have this install option for me it's uh, since it is already installed it is uh, disabled you, you, once you click install you basically uh, will be seeing something like uh, this and uh, if you continue you will uh, you'll get an option something like this in your case all the options will be selected but we don't need all of them we just need the spring id core if we do this much then we'll be actually having that uh, spring support uh, spring xml support available in this lecture we will be creating a maven project in spring tool suite in our previous lecture, we have downloaded Spring Tool Suite and installed it in our app system. So let's head over to Spring Tool Suite and uh, create a Maven project. So currently, I am in uh, Spring Tool Suite. Uh, yeah, it's open. So let's create a Maven project first. So once we search Maven project, create a new Maven project. We, we do not uh, require any um, specific Maven project structure. So normally, uh, whenever we are selecting Maven project, Maven, uh, this STS gives you an option to uh, select uh, archetype. Basically, archetype is a uh, structure. So Maven already provides uh, different type of, uh, based on the different 
projects, different type of technologies or different type of uh, nature, it, uh, the, the project structure is different, that is basically known as archetype. In our case, we are not interested about any particular archetype, so we will skip it and we will go with the default archetype. In the next page, we have to uh, give our group ID and the artifact ID. So group ID is basically uh, our project will part of some some group. So whenever we are uh, developing applications for an organization, the organization will have a group or uh, the project. Uh, the project might have some sub projects and all and it will share a root. So that root will be uh, the group ID and artifact ID is the application name here. So I'm providing group ID as com dot code fountain dot spring dot core and artifact ID as spring code tasks. Uh, the version is by default selected as 0, .0 0.0.1 .1 snapshot. So normally by default all projects starts with the snapshot version. In our case the packaging is jar. Uh, though it supports jar, pom and over. Since this is a plain uh, spring project, we will be selecting jar. This again we have this name and description. We can, uh, these are optionals. Uh, I can actually give a uh, name spring core task and uh, I can select a description spring core task description. So this is fine and then uh, at the bottom we have parent project. So um, normally Maven supports multi-module uh, project. In our case, um, in that case we'll have a parent project. Under that we'll have different child projects and they'll support parent and all. If you uh, uh, check Spring, uh, Spring Boot, uh, then we, uh, basically we have this parent concept. So Spring Boot provides a parent POM. Uh, all our Spring Boot projects will be basically referring to that. In this uh, course we are not dealing with that. So we'll skip this part and then finish. Once you click finish, we can see creating project spring code tasks. So uh, this is what we discussed in the last uh, section also. This progress bar normally shows all different type of progresses. So in this case, first it is creating the project and then it build the workspace. So this is a empty project. There is nothing in that. If we even we see our pom.xml, there is uh, nothing in that pom.xml. What all we have selected, only those concepts are there. Group ID, we have selected this. Uh, and artifact ID, we have provided spring code tasks. Version, we have provided uh, that 0.0.1 .0 snapshot and spring code task name. Uh, this is typo. So spring code task and then description, spring code task description. Now we're going to add a couple of more things here. First thing is we will be adding a property. So the property will be spring version. We'll be using Spring 5.1.8. Release version, and then we'll be uh, adding all our dependencies. So I just press Control M to maximize this window. So dependencies under dependencies, we will add um, one more one dependency, uh, and then we'll have this group ID and uh, artifact ID. The group ID will be org dot spring framework. So org dot spring framework and our artifact in this case one artifact we need is spring core. And then the last one is the version. So we are using spring dot version. Similarly, uh, we need another dependency which is spring context. So these two will be mainly uh, main versions. If you see the project, it's uh, downloading all the dependencies and versions. Okay, some issue. Let's figure it out what is the issue. Spring framework, so there is a spelling mistake here. As you were corrected, uh, so this is good to go now. 
uh, in this case now we can see all the maven dependencies got added so spring core is added spring context is added also if you uh, notice we have additional jar files spring expression spring beans though we have not mentioned these uh, these are actually there in our class path this is because maven is uh, doing this for us uh, as at the start of this course we discussed that uh, we'll be using maven to manage the dependencies so here uh, is maven is actually uh, playing a uh, playing its role so we are just providing the uh, the required dependencies which we need but there there are transitive dependencies which basically requires in the class path for these dependencies to work so for example spring core might be requiring uh, the spring jcl or uh, spring beans internally but maven is doing that transitive dependency resol resolution for us okay so um, let's quickly go over it again so we have uh, this maven pom file so this is project uh, now uh, this is the configuration file where we are actually uh, providing all our dependencies so we have only two dependencies here spring core and spring context notice one thing here is uh, we are not giving the version here instead of uh, giving uh, in a as a placeholder manner we could actually hard coded the version 5.1.8. release but uh, we are actually uh, using placeholders all the places this is a good practice so normally whenever we have version in our pom file we should basically uh, extract those in terms of properties so that in future let's say tomorrow uh, if we are upgrading to spring version 5.2.0 we need not go through all the dependencies and change the version we can change in only one place and that will reflect in all the entire uh, pom file so this is a good coding practice now um, if we go back to our uh, maven project structure there is nothing created here src main java so this is for our uh, uh, java java files source uh, resources are for us, uh, the other other supporting files so we'll stop here in this we'll come back to this uh, again later on thank you for watching in the previous lecture we have installed spring tool suite as well as we have created a maven project in our spring tool suite in this lecture we are going to install intellij idea intellij idea is another java ide so there are two versions available of intellij idea one is community edition and another is ultimate edition community edition is freely available for everyone and ultimate edition is not free there is one month trial available for um, this ultimate edition and then we have to buy intellij idea is also available for windows mac os and linux so the difference between uh, community edition and ultimate edition is that ultimate edition provides uh, many additional stuffs for example in ultimate edition um, intellij idea has full support for spring so it's very handy and easy to create different configuration and all those uh, things in this course we will be using community edition which is freely available for us to download in case uh, you would like to try ultimate edition you can download ultimate edition but this is only limited to one month so let's head over to uh, this intellij idea website so intellij idea is created by a company called jet brains so this is intellij idea website we can uh, go to download page at the moment uh, the current version available is 2019.1 and 2019.2 is on the way so once we uh, click on this download button it will take us to the download page as you can see here we have ultimate edition as well as community edition uh, in ultimate edition as i said uh, there is a it's a there is a free trial available but uh, it's uh, only for a month and then we have community edition which is uh, free and open source so we can download this also we can see we have uh, different uh, uh, versions uh, one is for windows one is for mac os and one is for linux if you are using mac os you can download um, this uh, ultimate edition mac os version or community edition mac os version as well as we have one version for linux so in this case as i said uh, we'll be using community edition so whichever um, version you would like you can download um, uh, in for this course i have already downloaded the i have already downloaded this community edition in my 
system and it's already available you can actually download on the .exe version and then just double click uh, if it is in windows double click and install if it is for mac os and linux please follow the respective uh, uh, guidelines to install it i have already installed and it is available uh, in my desktop so we'll just head over there and then um, we'll we'll have a look in the previous lecture we have uh, downloaded intellija idea from jetbrains website and installed it in this particular lecture we are going to create a maven project in intellija idea so i have already installed um intellij in my system and it is available here in my desktop as you can see i'm using the community edition intellij idea community edition and it's the uh, as of now this is the latest version uh, so once intellij idea is opened so we can so this is the this is the win, this is the window uh, for intellij idea it is quite similar the layout is quite similar so in the left hand side uh, it is quite similar to spring tool suite in the left hand side you have all the project related information and in the right hand side in the big window you have uh, you can ha uh, view all your uh, java files interfaces or any other property files uh, on top you can actually uh, set uh, the, your configurations and run your pro uh, pro programs and then you have maven settings in the uh, right hand side so let's create a new uh, project here new maven project in intellij idea so new project again uh, we will be selecting my maven here if if you have downloaded intellij ultimate edition then probably you can see a few more options here but since this is a community edition uh, the options are limited here we are going to use maven uh, in your case you might need to uh, select the project sdk also you can actually create a new and uh, head over to your java installation directory and it will be uh, checking uh, taking your project sdk in my case i have already set up uh, the java part so it's uh, by default taking the project sdk as java version 12 in this case also we are not going to select any specific type of archetype so again uh, maven is providing all the list of archetypes here we are not going to use any archetype we are going to stick to the default one so we have selected maven and then go to next here again we have to use group id and artifact id i'm going to use the same structure com dot code fountain dot spring dot core and our project name will be spring or tasks here again uh, i i just want to put this hyphens and this is the project location i have already selected if you want to uh, switch to some other directory you can click here and uh, browse to your specific directory i have selected here and i am just going to finish so it's saying this directory doesn't exist and uh, intellij idea is going to create it fine and since i have already uh, have one project in my workspace uh, it is asking whether i want to use uh, this window to open the currently uh, the new newly created project or i want to open in a new window so in this case i don't want to open another instance of intellij idea so i am going to use this window so once i click this window um, it just uh, it's uh, showing us these options here it's giving all these options maven project needs to be imported i will enable auto import so enable auto import option i am selecting then again uh, what we have seen for spring sts uh, the structure is almost similar the model version group id artifact id and version is as is only thing the uh, project name and the description is not here as you discussed earlier those two are optional so we even if we skip those no problem i'll just maximize this window a uh, little bit uh, if i press the shortcut alt 1 it will maximize the window now uh, similarly what we have done for sts we are going to do the same thing uh, only thing here uh, uh, this particular intellij uh, idea basically um, you will have uh, quite good tooling support um, it's very easy to type here uh, intellij idea will pro provide a lot of suggestions uh, based on the context so if i go properties properties uh, in this case i just need on uh, this and then i am going to select uh, this spring dot 
version and I am going to stick to spring 5.1.8. release and then I am going to select the dependencies and then dependency. So, this is this is the this is what I was talking about see uh, with very less typing uh, we can actually get, uh, get all these uh, boilerplate code we need, need not type uh, this all be prompted by IntelliJ. So, in this regard uh, IntelliJ is uh, better than STS. Let us select org dot spring framework and then uh, we will using we will be using spring core and version. So, even if you see even if uh, Maven, uh, this uh, it is prompting us the latest version also. So, 5.2.0. Uh, milestone 3, we are not going to use that, we are going to stick to 5.1.8 uh, release. So, what I will do is I will just use this version what I have done for STS. So, let us place the version here, uh, we are using this, and then I will just copy paste this for spring context as well. And once I save uh, save this uh, uh, POM file, again let us go back and see. Uh, so, if you go to the external dependencies, if your project setup everything is correct, you can see that Maven dependencies are added as part of our external libraries. So, here again we are having Spring AOP 5.1.8, uh, Spring Beans, Spring Context, Core, Expressions and JCL. So, these are the bare minimum stuffs we need in uh, this course, we, we will not uh, will not be requiring hopefully will not be requiring any other dependencies. So, that is it. So, we have set up our uh, Maven project in uh, IntelliJ IDEA. We will come back to this uh, later part of this course. Thank you for watching. We are at the end of this module. In this module, uh, we have actually set up our development environment and then we installed Java, the JDK. We have also installed Spring Tool Suite and then we have created a Maven project in Spring Tool Suite. Followed to that we had installed IntelliJ IDEA and then finally we had created a Maven project in IntelliJ IDEA. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next module. Welcome to module 3 of uh, Spring Core uh, series. In this module we are going to provide a brief overview of Spring framework. We are going to see the history of uh, Spring as well as we are going to cover uh, different important concepts uh, behind Spring core. So, Spring overview, what is Spring or what is Spring framework? So, this is the doc, uh, definition I found in Spring documentation. Spring framework is a Java platform that provides comprehensive infrastructure support for developing Java applications. Spring handles the infrastructure so you can focus on your application. So, there is uh, quite a bit of stuff here. Uh, one important part is Spring framework is a Java platform. So, it is a Java based uh, framework. It is on top of Java and then uh, it is talking about infrastructure support. So, this part is uh, extremely critical in terms of Spring. Uh, this uh, There is many things in terms of infrastructure support which Spring does for us. We will come to that in a moment. And then uh, for developing Java applications. So, this is again uh, as Spring is a uh, Java framework. So, definitely it is being used for Java application development. And then Spring handles the infrastructure so that you can focus on your application. This is very true in terms of Spring application development. Uh, for application developers, um, there will be many aspects uh, which uh, a developer needs to uh, take care of. For example, you will have uh, transaction management, you will have um, messaging infrastructure management or things like uh, uh, other things like uh, remote API handling. So, these are uh, not exactly related to the uh, application. These are the infrastructure which uh, which is uh, our application depending on. So, these infrastructure uh, at times uh, this infrastructure uh, cause uh, too much of problem. For example, let us say we are uh, handling uh, a transaction, a database transaction. So, there are many uh, points that needs to be taken care of. Firstly, uh, the commit uh, whether the transaction is successfully uh, getting committed or not, um, 
or if it is needs to be rolled back or different save points or different connection management so these all are actually infrastructure it has nothing to do with the actual business part of it so in these scenarios spring comes very handy it does the heavy lifting for us so for example if you see let's say uh, you want to make a java method execute in a database transaction without having to deal with the transaction api or uh, in that matter let's say you want to make a local method uh, a remote procedure without having to deal with the remote apis so these remote api or transaction api these are the infrastructure here in terms of spring framework spring provides a very good support uh, in in this aspect so for example transaction api spring has a very robust transaction management um, uh, facilities it has that declarative transaction management so we just tell what we need to do and uh, spring takes care most of the infrastructure of the heavy lifting part in this lecture we are going to talk about spring history how spring evolved so the very first version of spring framework is spring framework 1.0 and it got released in 2004 following to that spring framework 2.0 came in 2006 in spring framework 2000 uh, 2006 version which is 2.0 we have a uh, simplified xml configuration and java 5 support in the year 2007 spring uh, framework 2.5 came and uh, this 2.5 version provides support for annotation based configuration Spring Framework 3.0 came in 2009, and then in 2013, uh, another major release of Spring Framework, Spring Framework 4.0 came. In that, uh, Java 8 support was added to Spring, and lastly, in 2017, Spring Framework 5.0 came. So this is the uh, major, uh, last major release of Spring, and uh, this is the current version. So in our project, have you seen? Uh, we are using 5.1.8, and um, we we have some milestone releases like 5.2. but at the moment spring framework 5.0 is the major uh, spring release in the last uh, lecture we have provided an overview for spring we discussed what spring framework is and we also discussed how spring has evolved over the period now uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about what spring means in uh, terms of a developer perspective so uh, it's a dependency injection framework so in a, at the core of spring is the dependency uh, injection part which will come to uh, come very shortly and we'll have a detailed section on this what is dependency injection but in an uh, in in core spring is a dependency injection framework uh, spring enable us to build applications from posos so this is also a critical part uh, the uh, main part uh, of spring applications are actually lot lots of lots of posos we'll see what a poso is and then spring also enable us to apply enterprise services non invasively to the posos so as uh, we have seen in the spring overview section that enterprise services means those sort of stuff so uh, we are dealing with transaction api or messaging api or things like remote api so those uh, uh, spring allow us to apply on our posos and last but not the least spring is open source in this lecture we'll talk about uh, different spring modules so uh, this is uh, a reference uh, diagram which i have taken from the spring's uh, reference documentation so if you see uh, we have the test section we have a core container part then we have aop aspects and then uh, we have data access integration and web so these are the high level blocks in spring in the core container so this is where uh, this is the foundation so all other modules are actually relying on this core container and so in core container we have spring beans which handles all beans then spring core spring context and spring expression language which is spell so if you have uh, seen the when we created the maven project we have actually used core and context dependencies and when we use core dependency uh, by default spring beans uh, automatically came because that was a transitive dependency so these are actually uh, related then we have aop and aspects these are for aspect oriented programming so spring provides support for aspect oriented programming 
then we have instrumentation and messaging spring provides um, excellent support for um, jms messaging infrastructure it has uh, uh, it provides many simply uh, simplified uh, uh, templates and all such things then we have web part in the web part mainly we have spring web where we have actually uh, spring mbc web socket sublet and portlet all those stuffs and then we have data access and integration so spring provides excellent support for jwc uh, for java database connectivity so your application can actually use different type of uh, uh, templates jwc templates which is provided also it spring provides uh, different type of prepare statement setter result set extractor so those are very handy then it has a support for object relational mapping orm then we have as i said we have support for jms uh, so this is basically for integration purpose normally uh, spring is used for developing enterprise applications and enterprise applications will definitely have some integration points uh, so that it can talk to some uh, different applications and jms is jms is one of the uh, module which is very heavily used industry wide for uh, communication purpose message based communication purpose then we have oxm object xml mapping you uh, in uh, in java so many times we will be using java and xml so at times we need to convert java object to xml structure and xml structure to java so this support also is provided and then last but not the least there is a support for transaction management sometimes ma managing transactions um, can be very uh, difficult because there are so many things to take care of in this uh, regard spring provides excellent support for transaction management it has different type of transaction definitions uh, different type of transaction managers like platform transaction manager data source transaction managers and so on uh, anyway we are not going to cover all those things uh, in this course we will stick to the spring core so core context and beans part as well as spill so we are covering the core uh, part of it so so these are the spring modules in a, a nutshell in this lecture we will talk about object dependency management a java application is a collection of objects so there are hundreds of thousands of objects which form the backbone of the application objects interact with each other to achieve application goals and in order to communicate objects depend on each other let's take one example so in this case we have um, one user service so this is um, this user service is used to perform uh, basic uh, operations so it provides different services to the user you can actually create a user or uh, basically save a user or find a user or update a user details or delete a, a user information now uh, this service uh, is provided by user service class but user service just provide the service the underlying uh, service or uh, the repository information is different it can be the repository could be uh, some relational database it could be a no sql database it could be a in memory database it could be anything but this user service just takes the repository information uh, repository and through this repository it provides this these services so the repository is uh, providing the service and user service is dependent on user repository if you see the user repository class here so here is the actual um, uh, logic is written so in this case some dummy implementation provided but based on the actual scenario it could be a uh, uh, my uh, relational uh, database where uh, this uh, information can be stored or it could be anything but the idea is user service is providing the services with the help of user repository class and this user repository class could be anything and so user service is basically dependent on user repository in order to provide user service to services uh, it needs a user repository right now one way of managing this dependency so um, it would be user service uh, can uh, create the user repository uh, in within its own constructor but this is a very bad idea because in this there are a couple of problems with it first problem is uh, this code is uh, not unit test it could be difficult to do unit testing in this code because we are creating the user repository here itself and 
another problem is user repository creation might not be as simple as it looks like here it there could be let's say it's a relational database you might need to pass database information or or some other stuff so user service uh, should not be dealing with all those things user service just need the dependency of user uh, repository but in this case we are actually creating the user repository within user service which is not at all a good practice so here is the problem how do we manage this dependency who uh, how this dependency can be handled in much better way so here comes uh, the uh, the two approaches one will be handling it through constructor injection so this injection terms comes into picture uh, and another option could be setter injection so basically user service should never create the user repository class or user repository object uh, within itself someone should pass it to it so one way of passing would be through constructor so whenever user service is creating um, getting created it ensures or enforces to the user that you pass me a user repository in my constructor another way would be user service is uh, asking its user to set the user repository to it so these are the two ways where uh, we, we can actually do constructor injection or setter injection so the term here is dependency injection so instead of the dependency is uh, instead of getting it handled inside the actual class it is being injected from outside now how we are injecting that is done either through constructor injection or setter injection or through some other mechanism that's that's a different topic but the thing is we are injecting the dependency from outside that's the reason this term uh, is known as dependency injection and here comes uh, spring so spring actually helps us to uh, do this dependency injection so let's see this uh, part uh, as part of uh, our demonstration so we'll, we'll just create this uh, piece of code here so com dot code fountain dot spring dot core this is our package in that let's create this class users service and a java doc of it provides crud support to the users okay and uh, this user user service has user repository information with it private yeah. user repository and let's create this so once you go back go to the front of user repository and press alt enter you can see this create class so i'll just create this class in the same package and uh, user repository will have different services so for example public void save and it saves a user we created this class this is this is the pojo for us this it, it, it takes the basic user information let's create this as well so user has a uh, user id and let's say user has its own name and the two string method so if i press all alt insert we will get the shortcut so i just do a two string and that's it and then i just need to have a constructor right so we have created the user and user repository it will just provide a save mechanism so we, we are not going to provide any implementation here so we just providing the uh, the methods so save method just saves an user in some persistent storage we don't know here what it is and public user find by id 
long user ID and then it just returns. So, in this case it just returns null, but in actual scenario it will maybe look up to the database and uh, it will find out that user or if the user does not exist it should throw some exception. Other case is public void uh, update. So, you take uh, updated user and just update it in the database. In this case also you are not, not providing any implementation and the last but not the least is the delete. So, we delete an existing user, we take the ID of the user and we delete the user or make the user inactive in the database. So, these are the services, these are the facilities provided by the user repository uh, class. So, it will have, uh, you can, it provides an option to save a user, save an user, it provides an option to find an user, update an user details or delete an user information. Now, user service just call all, so public void save user, user and then we will just call repository, user repository dot save and we will just pass the user information. Okay. Similarly, we will have a public void find by id and then we will pass long user id. So, again user repository dot find by id and supply the user id. Then public void uh, update, we will take an updated user information and we will just call user repository dot update and we will pass the user information and the last one is delete, public void delete delete again takes the long user id and it calls user repository dot delete supply the user id. So, the same thing which you have seen in the uh, um, pre presentation. So, user service has a dependency on is user repository. Okay. So, how we create this user repository is the uh, main part here. So, in case of a spring, spring provides option to do both constructor injection as well as setter injection. Also spring provides an option to auto wire. So, we basically have uh, an auto wire option here. So, spring, uh, spring can actually do the auto wiring by type or by name or by constructor. So, based on different type of uh, type configured, it can actually find out that user repository and automatically inject it for us. So, that is where spring dependency injection or spring IOC container comes into play and it helps in dependency management. In the last lecture, we talked about uh, dependency management, object dependency management and how possibly we can deal with it. But there are a couple of problems uh, with that, up, with those approaches. For example, we talked about uh, when a particular object needs a dependency, someone needs to inject it. And there are, uh, we talked about two different approaches. One is constructor based injection and another is setter based injection. But uh, the problem is we know we need to inject the object, but the object needs to be created somewhere and it needs to be created by someone. But we do not know who is there someone and where that object needs to be created. And here uh, is the problem. So, application developers are responsible to manage the object dependencies and object creation. So, though there are approaches, but it is very difficult to create the objects at right place. And another, another problem is initializing and providing dependencies to child objects can be daunting when there are a large number of them. So, an enterprise application actually could be a pretty large and there could be hundreds of thousands of objects available and it can be very difficult to manage the dependency and the object dependency graph by the normal application developers. To deal with this problem, we have Spring IOC container which does this job for us. 
in the last lecture we have seen uh, the problem uh, with managing object dependencies by application developers but what if we just uh, have an option to tell what we need and let spring inject the dependencies for us think about this so we have seen the constructor injection or we are uh, we have seen setter injection what if the user service class which we have seen just declares that okay i need user repository and let someone pass it to it so spring ioc container is here to help we provide spring container the ioc container a bin definitions and uh, let it manage the object creation initialization assembling and also the dependency graph so bin definition uh, is something where we actually providing uh, the information about that bin uh, what all properties or what all dependencies it has and let spring manage that bin so bin definition can be provided through xml bin definition configuration file or it can be provided through java configurations now let's see how it works so here is this diagram again from spring uh, reference documentation so basically we have spring container so this is the spring inversion of control container spring ioc container what we are giving it is the configuration metadata and we are providing our pojo or the business objects right so in configuration metadata is uh, we can just think of it's a configuration file or some metadata information which which uh, which is actually given to the container along with the pojos and spring container reads the metadata information and creates the pojo or the beans in the container so eventually once the spring container is successfully initialized that means it basically read the entire metadata configuration files or the uh, associated dependent metadata files and all those things and eventually it initializes itself with all the required beans so the application is fully ready to use all the beans so far we talked about pojo and beans right so what is a pojo so here is the definition uh, from wikipedia a pojo uh, in software engineering a plain old java object or pojo is an ordinary java object and not bounded by any special restriction and not requiring any class path so the important part here is it's a ordinary java object and it doesn't require any special restriction so if we have seen the user object uh, the user user service class you have seen it just has few methods that's it nothing else it's just a plain java object it has some methods and one particular property which was user repository it is it, it it doesn't extend anything or things like that for example uh, when you say extend part so for example if you if you are if you are writing a class and you want it to declare it as a sublet then uh, your class uh, should be extending uh, either http sublet or some type of uh, some super type of http sublet like that to to make to to provide it that that sublet nature to it right so that the life cycle and all those things are handled similarly if you want to create a uh, ejb bin uh, your your class needs to implement that entity bin but in case of pojo uh, there is no such thing you just declare the normal java class assign uh, with all the properties or the behaviors that's it it is a pojo and it can be handled by spring so here is a simple example uh, of a pojo class here we have a product so let's say we are dealing with some e-commerce application and we have various type of products so product wise we have uh, each product uh, has a product id and a product name and we have the associated getters and setters that's it this is a plain uh, old java object this is a pojo class also at times we are using the term called bin so pojos are also known as beans in terms of spring context so when we talk about spring in spring terminology we use the term bin instead of pojo we will be calling like bin definition or bin creation and all those things 
in this lecture we'll talk about spring ioc container the application context interface represents the spring ioc container it is responsible for instantiating configuring and assembling the bins container gets its instructions on what objects to instantiate configure and assemble by reading the configuration metadata now there are uh, two ways we generally pass this configuration metadata uh, one is the xml uh, bin definition file so this is a, an example of con uh, xml configuration metadata so in this case we have um, our uh, bins so different bin information uh, provided here in within that bins basically it's the xml document so it has this xml version and encoding information and then we have the different namespaces uh, in this case since we are using uh, bin from the bins uh, namespace so that is marked as default and associated uh, we have only implemented spring bins um, xsd file here uh, in this xml file we are uh, supplying two different uh, bin information one bin is our person bin which is and then we are giving the fully qualified class name which is uh, uh, in this particular package okay this is one way of feeding this so uh, uh, if you recall the earlier diagram where we are actually uh, passing this uh, two information uh, we had this spring uh, ioc container and then one way we are supplying that configuration metadata and other way we are supplying the POSO. So if you see this file, uh, the same thing, um, we are actually supplying our XML configuration file and we are also supplying our uh, person object. So we are, uh, the person class is written somewhere, so just keeping that information here, right? So these two information, what Spring uh, container does is it just read this information and it uh, loads these beans one after another based on the dependencies and in this case we have uh, these two are uh, two separate beans they are not dependent uh, they are not depending with each other they don't have any reference so um, person is one bean and address is another bean the other alternative is through java configuration so conf uh, the configuration metadata can be provided through java configuration as well uh, so this is a traditional uh, way of uh, passing the java configuration so this is uh, the Java configs are mainly to deal with uh, annotations, Java annotations. We have uh, person configuration class in that we are uh, marking it as add configuration, which makes this class as a spring uh, Java configuration file. Within that, we are providing all the bin information. So we are giving the bin uh, uh, definitions here. So person object and address object and so on. So this is another way of uh, creating uh, the spring configuration metadata file. Uh, one good thing is uh, slowly um, spring is moving from uh, the XML based configuration to Java configuration, particularly if you see the spring boot, uh, it uses the uh, that annotation based configuration a lot and uh, all uh, mostly new uh, spring applications are actually starting with uh, this annotation based configuration uh, configuration so that will not have to deal with that XML um, file, a separate file. But there are uh, still projects, um, old projects, which are actually started with uh, XML files. And it's not very easy uh, for them to move from XML to Java. So most likely, both the configurations are going to stay for a while. So in this, uh, we have seen uh, the Java configuration um, file, just one uh, annotation add configuration that makes this class uh, special and it makes this class as a spring configuration file uh, it's so spring will know that okay this is a configuration file and in this class i will i will find bin definitions so it will look for the bin definition so whichever uh, method is uh, marked as with add bin annotation will be the bin so this is a bin so what we have seen in the xml structure here uh, bin id as person and class equal to this if you see the same information is given here so uh, here if you see there is no bin id or things like that provided uh, the important part here is whatever method name we are providing here will be treated as bin name okay alternatively this bin annotation has uh, the parameters so we can actually if you want to provide a specific name we can uh, override this uh, behavior and we can give a person let's say you want to give that person some name and we can actually pass that uh, information in uh, name equal to so and so and we can actually define or let's say we are defining multiple persons so you can have person uh, so many uh, different different uh, over overloaded methods 
so and we can pass different person person name so that the spring can spring uh, ioc container will manage those many bins with those those different names in this lecture we'll provide information about bin factory interface so bin factory interface uh, is something uh, which is there in the root of uh, spring container hierarchy so in that uh, spring dependency injection functionality is implemented using this uh, bin factory interface and its sub interfaces such as this application context uh, bin factory is the root interface for accessing uh, spring bin container and this is also provides uh, basic client view of a bin container and this interface is implemented by um, objects that hold a number of bin definitions is uniquely identified by a string name in this lecture we'll talk about application context interface so application context is the central interface to provide configuration for a spring application and uh, this in particular interface is extremely cr critical in terms of spring ioc so most of the um, uh, spring ioc container uh, uh, will be uh, different type of uh, application context for example we'll have class path xml application context or uh, annotation configuration uh, application context and there are different uh, variation of it in terms of web application context so we have web application context which deals mainly with the web part web application part so this uh, application context interface is extremely critical and this provides a read only uh, when the application is running but uh, it may uh, may be reloaded uh, if the implementation supports this so this is just an interface and uh, uh, spring will uh, spring provides different implementation of it then uh, we have this implements various other interfaces to provide useful features um, this interface implements environment capable message source and application event publishers so we'll see what uh, exactly these interfaces uh, um, does environment capable message source or application event publishers um, in a later part of this course in the previous lecture we have seen uh, spring ioc container we have seen how to provide uh, configuration file metadata configuration file to the ioc container we have seen there are two ways one is xml bin definition file and another is java configuration in this video lecture we are going to see xml configuration so we will create a, a project in that we will be uh, creating a different uh, pojo and then we will write the spring configuration file the xml file and then we will try to access the container we will then see java configuration we will try to implement the same uh, thing through uh, java configuration annotations we will then try to access the container uh, through bin factory interface and then follow to that we will try to access the container through application context so currently i am in spring tool suite in our setup uh, module we have set up spring tool suite and we have created a maven project so i have opened that maven project and uh, with this uh, we will be creating a pojo and then we will be writing our spring bin definition file and then we will try to access uh, our bin that pojo uh, from a uh, spring ios container so let's get started i'll create a, a new package so com dot code fountain dot spring dot core and we'll create a uh, product object uh, product class here A product will have an ID, which is uh, let's make it string. We have a product ID, and we have a product name. And last thing, we'll have product. description okay we'll generate the constructor 
so I did uh, right click source and then here uh, spring tools will provide the option to generate the constructor from fields I'll use all three of the fields and I need the getter methods so that also you can generate select getters and this and the last thing we'll be doing is we'll generate the two string method so we're using all three of these fields to generate our two string method now if we have a look uh, we have for our product class in that we have product id product name product description and we have our constructor and the getter methods to get access to these uh, parameters and then we have our r2 stream method let's save this file now we'll create a new spring bean definition file so if you look you will have a spring here and you will get spring bean configuration file so with this wizard we can create our spring bean configuration file next so we'll give this a name we'll use that name application context dot xml next now here is uh, a different namespaces so uh, as of now these are the namespaces since uh, we have uh, we have aop beans c namespace cache context je lang p task and util in this case we are uh, dealing with the beans so we'll only select uh, the beans namespace and we'll also select the latest namespace xsd file for dot 3 and then we'll do next there is nothing extra to be added and finish it off once this file is created let's maximize the editor so this is the empty uh, application context file uh, since this is an xml file we have this xml uh, version encoding and then the beans namespace information what we have selected uh, in the previous that wizard if you have selected some other uh, mod uh, uh, namespaces such as aop or lang or p namespaces those information would have been here but since we need only bean We'll just provide, uh, we have just provided only beans namespace. Now let's create our bean. So um, uh, if you are uh, familiar with XML, you know that XML, uh, any XML document will be wrapped with uh, this root tag. So beans is our root tag. And uh, within that we'll have multiple bean. So first bean, bean will give ID, bean ID equal to product. And then class class equal to so here we can uh, mention that uh, fully qualified class class name dot product okay so we have uh, provided our bean uh, id and we have provided the class name now if you uh, see this product uh, this is uh, taking through constructor arguments so let's make the constructor arguments we can use constructor args there are two attributes one is name and one is value since in our case we have three parameters we are passing three we have product id product name and product description product id product name and product description so we have uh, let's verify product id product name and product description and since these are simple types we are using the value attribute here had it been some other object we need to use a reference attribute which will be seeing in later part of uh, this course in reference uh, we can actually have other bean definition here and those bean definitions we can actually reference from our constructor arguments let's give the product id some uh, ref, some id and then give a product name let's say it's a laptop and uh, product description let's say it's some laptop okay. 
So, this is uh, where we have actually uh, defined our bin. Now, let us access to this bin. We will have a new class which will be our main class. We will give this a name product main. So, this will be our main method. Now, how do we access uh, this? So, uh, as we said, application context, this is just the definition file. We now need to uh, follow a couple of steps. First thing is instantiating the container. First step is instantiate the Spring IOC uh, container. Then next step will be get the bin information Spring, uh, Spring IOC and then uh, use the bin, right. So, let us uh, instantiate the container. So, there are multiple, we have seen that Spring uh, application context uh, interface that is the representation of Spring IOC container, but Spring uh, this application context is a is an interface. There are multiple implementations, concrete implementations available. So, one is a class path XML application context. So, if you see this is one of the concrete imp uh, uh, implementation of application context. So, this as the name uh, suggests, it can actually load the application context configuration files from class path. And if you see the hierarchy, uh, it extends the abstract XML application context which in turn uh, extends this uh, abstract refreshable config application context and then they uh, they have this abstract refreshable application context, abstract application context. So, this is the interface which again calling uh, configurable application context which in turn extends application context. So, this is the hierarchy and uh, this is the one of the design philosophy of Spring. So, they have uh, multiple layer in each layer if you keep on uh, uh, the more you go down the more specialized the behavior. So, in our case we are going to use class path XML application context. If you see uh, we have kept our uh, application context file in src main resources folder. So, this folder uh, is accessible uh, from class path. Let us create the uh, instantiate the uh, Spring IOC container. First thing we will do is we will take uh, application context and we will give it a name application context equal to new class path XML application context and we will pass our application context uh, file name application context dot XML. So, what we did here is uh, we have we are in, we have instanced basically this is where we are instantiating the spring IOC uh, container and we are passing that our configuration that spring uh, bin definition configuration file to the container. So, when this uh, file when this uh, line gets executed spring basically uh, reads this application context XML file which is in our case uh, this bin definition file and it will find that okay there is one bin called product and it will uh, read this fully qualified class name instance here this class and set these values uh, through constructor injection and make this product object ready for us. Uh, now, we have got the application context from application context we need to get our bin. So, application context provides many methods if you go to the bin get bin there are uh, many uh, there are many overloaded uh, methods one is get bin uh, you can pass the class type get bin you can pass your bin name you can pass the required type and some arguments you can pass uh, get bin uh, the bin name and the class type and um, uh, and so on so in this case we are just first we are going to use the um, required type bin so this is the easy one um, okay let's use the bin bin name first and see what why the earlier one that class type is preferable so we are giving the bin name as product Now, the problem with this is uh, the b get bin returns a object type. If we pass the uh, bin name here, then it will be uh, it will returning an object. We need to do explicit type casting to get the uh, particular type. So, for example, we know this is a product. So, if you see product product equal to this, we will be getting a uh, that uh, error that it can't uh, type mismatch cannot convert from object to product. So, we have to explicitly cast 
we have constituted now right now let us just print out this information product right so let us run it as you can see it just printed the product information product id is a123 product name equal to laptop and product description is some laptop which we have actually provided in our uh, configuration file so the interesting thing here is uh, there is no new operator here we are not instantiating the product class here we just um, providing the definition in application context.xml and then we are uh, instantiating our spring ioc container so as part of that process spring ioc is uh, reading the bin definition and then we are asking that uh, application uh, spring ioc container hey spring ioc container just give us that uh, bin we are just passing the bin name and then it is supplying us the product information or the product particular bean type. Now this is we are doing explicit type casting. We do not want to do that. So what we can do is we can actually uh, have uh, we can actually pass the class type of it. So product dot class so that uh, spring cannot actually figure out okay uh, this is a uh, this this is but this is a product class type. So accordingly it will uh, do the ca casting and all those things and we will return the appropriate type here and we can uh, print this. So let us execute this. Again if you see uh, it is printing the same information properly no problem. Now you see there was another uh, another option where we are actually passing the name and uh, type. So in this case uh, Spring is providing uh, able to figure out because you have only one product type. Let us say we have multiple product types then it will be difficult for Spring to figure out which product type to provide. Let us say uh, in our application context we are actually duplicating and um, we will have two uh, bin definition. One is uh, let us say product 1 and another is product 2. In product 2, let us say we are giving some different reference num, different product ID and let us say this time it is mobile. So we have two, uh, two products, product 1 and product 2 and if we try to run our application, it is going to uh, throw some exception. Let us see what exact exception uh, Spring is throwing. So what we are doing here is we are uh, still initialize the application context. So in this time application uh, spring IOC container will figure out that okay there are two particular bin definition. It will initialize both of these two bins and then uh, it will try to uh, uh, have those bin definitions in the container. Once we request for that particular bin information spring will return. But in this case there is some problem. Let us execute and see what is the problem. So as expected there is some error. If you see what is saying no unique bin definition exception. So this is the exception spring is throwing and it is giving a clear message as well. It is saying no qualifying bin of type uh, product available. Expected single matching uh, bin but found two product one and product two. So the type it cannot actually uh, figure out which bin to uh, return product one or product two because we are just asking give us a product bin but there are two of them which one to provide. To resolve that the other method comes into play. So we can actually pass that okay give me the bin product 1 uh, which is a product type so that spring can first figure out okay product 1 and it knows okay this is a product type so that it can add, add, do the proper casting and return as the bin. Now let us say uh, if we execute this now it should be fine. So we can see that it is printing the product uh, laptop which was earlier and let us say we try to access the product so it again printed our mobile uh, the second product right so this way uh, we can actually instantiate the constructor through application uh, class path application con uh, context the IOC container and then we can get the bin information now there is one thing if you have noticed uh, we are actually uh, providing the exact names here. So uh, if you see our product class, our product class is having the product ID, product name and product description. The exact same name we are passing here. Let us say I want to give um, some different name. I want to give description D -E -S -C -C -R -I -P -T -I -N. So product description. If we try to uh, initialize now, we are going to get exception. So we are getting exception because now there is no mapping. What the error saying is 
unsatisfied dependency exception and it cannot create that uh, product because it is now looking for uh, the parameters which is uh, not matching. So, it is saying like ambiguous argument values for uh, parameter of type. So, it is not basically it is not able to find a mapping. Now, in order to do that uh, we have one option where we can uh, do it, it is Java annotation. We can actually pass constructor um, properties and we can provide our properties in, a, in this fashion. So, now uh, uh, what we did was these two parameters are fine product ID and product name. Only thing we have changed our product description. So, let us copy it from here whatever we have typed. And let us re execute it. So, this time Spring was able to map properly. It is actually even though in the pin definition we have given some name, uh, it is actually able to map that product description to product disk. So, this is uh, one way where we can. Um, use different name in the bin definition file and in different uh, in the constructor parameter. In the previous lecture, we have seen uh, how we have actually written one Spring XML bin definition file and we had created our POJO and then we access that bin from the Spring RC container. One quick note here in case you have trouble creating the spring uh, bin definition file with spring tool suite 4 you can actually uh, head over to spring site and download spring tool suite 3 and spring tool suite 3 has support for uh, xml bin definition so you can actually uh, go to uh, spring tool suite 4 website and then uh, you can head over to Space where they are mentioning uh, support Spring Tools with 3. However, they are saying uh, uh, STS3 distributions will be until mid of 2019. And if you click on this page, it will take you to uh, download STS3 and you can download the STS3 uh, version Windows, Mac, or uh, Linux. However, uh, I would recommend uh, sticking to Spring Tools uh, 4, uh, STS 4 because STS 4 is the uh, next generation uh, Spring Tool Suite from Spring and they recommend uh, uh, using this only. Now, let us uh, go back to our uh, STS and uh, in this module, we will be creating uh, the Spring configuration through Java annotations. So, we will be writing our configuration classes as well as we will be writing our beans. So, let us create a new project, I am sorry, a new package com dot code fountain dot uh, spring dot code dot, but this time we will write java config. We will create our first POJO, we will create a uh, uh, POJO class called artist. Now, artist will have a name, so private string, let us give first name and then artist will have a last name, what else, uh, that is it, uh, let us keep this simple and we are going to create a constructor. and we will have our two string method. So, this is simple we have this artist class and we have um, it is a simple POJO we have first name and last name we have the constructor and then we have the two string method. Now let us create the uh, configuration class, we will have a configuration class called artist configuration. So, at the moment this is just a normal uh, Java class, it has no uh, meaning, but soon we are going to uh, make this class a bit special and we are going to add 
configuration annotation. So once we added the configuration annotation, this class become a Spring uh, Java configuration file. So Spring can actually detect this this uh, particular configuration class and read the content inside it. So if we, for example, if we say, uh, let's create our Bing. So public um, artist and then artist. So we'll just return new artist. Let's say uh, name John Doe. So at the moment, uh, this is just normal method. Spring will not be able to detect this because we have not given the bin, bin annotation. So once you have added the bin annotation, so this became a uh, Spring bin. Okay. Now. Um, so this is pretty simple class. We have artist configuration. We just added uh, one annotation add configuration and one bin definition through add bin annotation. Now let's create the uh, main class. So this is our main class. Now here uh, we'll have our main method. Now we are going to do a couple of things. So as you can see, this is not uh, XML configuration file. So class path XML application context is not going to work here. Because class path application, class path XML application context is first of all, it's for XML configuration files. And it is it can only load configuration files from the class path. But in this case, we are not dealing with XML. And we have Java annotations. So we have a different implementation of uh, application context. As I mentioned previously, application context is the uh, interface and there are multiple concrete implementations how we are exactly instantiating our um, Spring IOC container. So in this case, since we are using uh, Java configuration, we have a different implementation of application context. So let's see. We have, uh, we'll still be using our application context because this is our uh, root interface in the application context category. So we'll just give application context and new. Here we're going to use annotation con annotation config uh, XML context. Uh, sorry, annotation config. Application context. Okay. So annotation config application context. We have to supply the configuration file name so that it has uh, it can actually find out uh, that okay this is the configuration file, and it needs to uh, read it from here artist configuration and we supply the class. So that's it. So uh, in this uh, annotation con uh, config application context, it can uh, look for artist configuration class and can detect, okay, this is a Java configuration file and it can actually scan this file and look for the bin definitions and load those uh, bins and it will be available in the Spring IOC container. Now since we are accessing it through application context, this will be uh, same what we have done earlier, the methods which we have used so far. So let's uh, this time just print that value application context dot uh, get bin and we'll just pass the bin name. For example, in our case, the bin name will be in artist configuration class and as uh, the default naming policy is uh, it will be using whatever is the method name we are giving. So in this case, it is artist. Let's provide artist and see what uh, happens. If we run our, so we got our artist information printed, first name and last name, right? Now uh, let's change this name. Let's say this is artist one. Is there any impact? Yes, there is because now Spring is not able to locate a bin name artist because we have uh, the name uh, with which uh, uh, this bean is getting created in Spring container is artist1 and what we are looking for is artist. So there is a, there is no matching. But let's say we, we want to use, uh, we want to, we don't want to rely on this default naming convention. So what we can do is we can actually pass the name and let's say we want to give this uh, my artist okay and in this case uh, we are going to access 
my artist. So we can actually access now. It doesn't matter whatever method name I give here instead of artist one. Let's say if we give uh, another artist. It doesn't matter to us because we have given a name and we are always accessing with that particular name. So in all the scenarios, we are actually getting the name printed properly. Now let's see one more uh, thing here. So as of now, so far we are accessing the application context here, but we discussed that we have been factory as well. We can actually access um, our application context or we, are, we can actually access our Spring IOC container through being factory as well. So what we will do is we will just comment out this part and try to reference through bin factory. So we'll do as uh, bin factory. Okay, and here we'll pass our bin factory. So all these. Uh, methods are still available in bin factory because uh, actually these methods get bin methods are actually from bin factory since application context extends bin factory it inherits those bin uh, those methods so you see we can still access the john doe uh, this uh, information the artist information only thing is if we go to the bin factory implementation so this is the root interface see as you can see there is it's the parent there is nothing uh, uh, which it is extending or if we read the java doc of it we can see uh, this bin factory uh, implementation uh, spring it prints the root interface for accessing a spring bin container and this is the basic client view of a bin container so this is where um, we have all these uh, bin get bin methods you can actually read uh, the document uh, documentation for more information. We have various implementation of bin factory like listable bin factory and hierarchical bin factory. Uh, it, these bin factories get uh, is getting used in different contexts. But uh, if we go to the application context here again, so this is uh, this interface is the primary interface, and this is normally uh, referred as the Spring IOC container because uh, you can see it is actually extending uh, many other interfaces to provide different behavior. Uh, if you remember in our uh, earlier uh, discussion, we have mentioned uh, that application context extends environment capable and message source, application event publisher, source pattern resolver. So each of these interfaces is actually uh, providing some functionalities which are uh, which uh, you might like to use in your application. Uh, but um, the main thing uh, in application context is uh, uh, basically it has uh, many, many actually information. It has uh, um, all those uh, 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 things which is actually extending from different interfaces like environment capabilities. It can give you the environment information and uh, it can actually have message source. Um, if you see message source, this is basically uh, for resolving messages and all those stuff. We'll be actually seeing this, how we can support uh, this uh, localization and all those things through this. But um, remember this application context is uh, a primary interface uh, in terms of Spring IOC container and it is very, very much useful. We are now end of this module. In this module, we have covered uh, Spring overview, we have introduced uh, Spring and we discussed what Spring is and what Spring framework does. We then talked about Spring history, we discussed how Spring evolved uh, Spring, Spring 1.0 to Spring 5.0. We then talked about different Spring modules, web module, data, integration, access, uh, and then Spring core container, aspect, in instrument, and test. And then we talked about object dependency management. We provide a uh, detailed explanation uh, what is dependency management, uh, particularly object dependency management, and how it can be a very tedious task uh, in a large application. And then uh, we also mentioned that how Spring IOC container can help us uh, dealing with this object um, dependency management. It can inject the dependency for us. And we have also discussed about bean factory and application context. Uh, we have uh, discussed that there are two ways through which we can actually uh, initialize that uh, IOC container. We can do it through application con uh, we can do it through XML application uh, context as well as we can do it through Java configuration. We then have uh, seen the demonstration of both uh, both type of implementation. We have seen how to access application context as well as how to access Win Factory. Thank you for watching this module. I'll be seeing you in the next module.
Welcome to this module of uh, Spring course series. In this module, we will be looking in depth in XML based configuration. But before proceeding further, uh, let us recap what we have done. We have seen so far that Spring bean configurations can be done through XML based configuration or through Java based configuration. We have also seen different type of application contexts uh, such as class path XML application context and annotation config application context. We have seen that class path XML application context is being used to uh, load that uh, XML configuration find from class path. And then we have seen annotation config application context is being used for uh, loading that Java based configuration files. In this uh, tutorial, we are going to look into constructor based XML configuration. So we have already uh, seen how we are actually creating beans uh, through XML based configuration. In this module, uh, particularly in this video, we will uh, look in depth about how we are creating beans uh, through constructor arguments and also have a look about different constructor arg uh, attributes. Uh, so let us create a project again, uh, let us create a package again, uh, I will create a new package. So this package we will uh, name as com code fountain spring core then xml config dot constructor in this we will have a simple uh, plain of old java object pojo which will be person so let us say uh, the person has a uh, person has an IF ID, integer ID, and then person has a uh, first name. And also person has a last name. Then uh, the person, uh, let us create the constructor. So source uh, constructor is in fields. Here is in all three of the parameters id, first name, and last name. We generated the constructor, uh, we will be using uh, generating the getter methods so that we can access those uh, parameters. So, generate a getters and setters, select getters and generate. And last thing we will be doing is we will be adding our to string method. So this person class is ready. So this is a uh, plain old Java object. It has three parameters, ID, first name, and last name. And we have created the constructor and associated getter methods, as well as the two string implementation. Now let's create the application context for it. And note that this file name could be anything. Uh, since this is uh, just a spring bean configuration file, I just rename it application context. We can uh, rename it to anything. We can even give it person.xml as well. So let me create, I'll just stick to the pattern which I am using. Other again spring, uh, I double to spring and then spring bean configuration file. In that uh, resource, in resources section, we are going to create. So select that file name should be application context hyphen I will we are using constructor so I'll just do cons dot xml then again we'll be selecting only beans uh, namespace and we'll be also selecting uh, the latest xsd and finish so this will initialize the this XML uh, file with all the uh, namespaces and now let us quickly create the bin definition. So we have seen this earlier, we need an ID, let us say this ID is person and then uh, we will be having a class, so our class will be, so uh, it is person class which is in this package. We'll add the constructor args. So we will have a name and then we'll have the value. 
so we are uh, we are using simple types here so you can use mean value combination we have three parameters so one is id first name and last name so we have already seen this uh, in our earlier lecture so let's give the person his id one value let's give john and do so this uh, this is we are done with our bin creation it is uh, simple we have given given that bin as uh, id as person and the fully qualified class name and then we have given the constructor arguments id first name and last name which is there here again id first name and last name now let's create the uh, person name class so that we can initialize our ioc container in this let's add a main method what we'll do here is uh, application context application context is equal to new class path xml application context in that we can pass our application context dot constructor We'll just copy this line and place it here. So we got the uh, constructor uh, uh, application constructor XML file here. Now do application context dot get bin and we'll press person dot class and let's print the person information right away right away here. So this is out. executed so you can see the person information is getting printed first name last name and um, id uh, so we have already seen this far uh, that how we are passing the constructor arguments and but there are uh, other things which you can actually pass in the constructor argument let's see one thing here uh, the value is given as a uh, string here the value is given as a string but uh, what uh, id is expecting here is an integer so Spring is actually doing that implicit conversion for us and uh, trying to uh, provide us here. Let's say uh, here, let me give some uh, wrong value, which is not an integer. If I try to run it, uh, then uh, Spring is going to throw an exception because it can't cast. So it's saying us uh, undependent that uh, unsatisfied dependency expressed through constructor parameter zero could not convert argument uh, value of type basically it will be uh, integer uh, it can't convert that java dot lambda string to require type integer it got a number format exception so that means spring is internally trying to uh, convert that uh, integer type uh, that string type to integer type okay so uh, this is one point uh, another thing is let's say i don't want to use the name here so what i can use basically is i can uh, let's duplicate this so that we can keep this So I just commented out this bin definition and I, what I'll do is I instead of using the name we are going to use the indexes I can actually give index equal to 0 right so similarly I can use here index equal to 0 index equal to 1 and index equal to 2 right so I can give that as well once uh, since the bin name is same we need not do any change uh, in our other files so you can see that uh, still uh, these things are getting printed properly person information getting printed properly id first name and last name now let's say uh, to verify whether it's really working let's just give it as a junk index uh, let's say i'm giving 10 here but there is no index for it of 10 in our constructor arguments so uh, it is going to fail so as i as you can see spring is throwing an exception it is saying that uh, there is uh, could not resolve matching constructor so it's saying that uh, there is an issue okay so this is one thing then one more thing we can do is let's say i don't want to pass the indexes i can still uh, i can even do uh, something else 
So let's comment out this and instead of uh, passing the indexes what we will pass is we will pass the type information right so we we'll still keep the bin information intact only thing we will change here is type so type will be given as int then here uh, this is not integer so it's a string so string is an object type right it's not a primitive type so we have to give the uh, fully qualified name it's java dot lang dot string same thing is for the last name that is also a string right now let's execute it so it is able to spring is able to still determine what um, all these parameters are based on the type so since integer uh, the first parameter id is an integer it's an integer so it's uh, we are giving type as int other parameters are string types so we have given as type here as string we have also seen in the other place uh, in the previous video uh, that if we want if we don't want to use the same name uh, what we are passing here and if you use different name in the constructor we can use that uh, we can actually use that constructor properties annotation and we can pass those a uh, new uh, name so that it can actually map okay so uh, this is uh, pretty much about uh, constructor injection so we, uh, we can actually uh, as you can see we can we can pass the arguments in uh, different ways right we can give uh, we can keep pass the name we can pass the indexes we can pass the type so if you see uh, basically we have already covered index name and uh, type reference type we are uh, uh, we are not doing uh, right away we will do it in a later video where we will see uh, mm, uh, how basically beans are interacting with each other or the beans are referencing with each other so that will be seen in a later video in this uh, lecture we are going to look into a setter based xml configuration so in our earlier lecture we have seen uh, constructor based uh, xml configuration in this video we are going to look into setter based configuration uh, as you can see in the example uh, in this we have a bin definition bin id and the corresponding class and it has a property so uh, let's head over to spring tool suite and um, start um, create a new pr uh, new package so i'll just create a new package here with this uh, spring core task project and in this time i will rename it as a uh, setter let's create a uh, one object here uh, one class here we will be using a class called uh, let's say artist okay so our artist class this will be the pojo and artist will have a artist will have their its first name and artist will have its last name Uh, since this is setter based injection we are not going to create a constructor instead we will be providing normal getters and setters so let's head over to uh, getters and setters generate these two getters first name and last name i have selected all this time instead of uh, selecting only getters and generate these getters and setters we will also have uh, the two string method overridden generate two string and we have both first name and last name selected let's generate it so uh, this is the pojo and we are done with the pojo this is uh, artist class we have first name last name and we have the getters and setters and the two string method let's write down the configuration file so this time i'll not go from the beginning i'll just copy this and i'll just rename it to application context setter in this uh, first of all uh, let's clean up we don't need all this information we'll create fresh bin rest all part remains same so we have uh, uh, the xml and then the beans uh, names, namespaces and the xst uh, let's create the new bin bin name uh, bin id equal to uh, in this case artist and class equal to we are going to use the same class name which we just now created artist dot now here is a, a difference in the earlier one we have seen we are actually using uh, constructor args because we have a constructor and uh, we, these parameters are getting uh, passed as a constructor argument but in this case we don't have a constructor we are going to use setter based injection 
So, in that case we need to select the property. So, property name equal to what and property value. So, property name in our case first name and value. So, this is a plain type. So, it will support value equal to let us again give the same name John and since this we are not there is nothing inside the property we can actually close this property tag slip self closing tag and then let us create the last name also. So, last name will be John Doe. So, note one thing that both of these are actually uh, normal spring normal spring type. So, uh, sorry these are normal data type property uh, name equal to first name which is a string and property name equal to last name which is also a string. So, we can pass these normal value types, but if these are uh, different type of um, different object or different bean we can actually provide a reference here. So, again uh, I am uh, uh, skipping it for now we will come back to this in a later video when we will be uh, seeing the references how objects are referencing each other for both constructor as well as for properties. So, we have basically done here we have uh, created the uh, bean definition we have uh, the first name property and last name property and we have created both uh, uh, or provided both the values. Now, let us head over to our uh, let us create a new class called artist main. This is going to be our main main class in that we will be having our main method. So, you know I will just copy this say uh, this from uh, here in the old it is same only thing our application context file name is different instead of constructor it is be it is setter and instead of person this this time it is artist right. So, we just cleaned up. Uh, so, what we have done is we are again initializing this application context setter file and then uh, getting that artist class and printing that bin. So, let us execute and see what uh, what it is providing. So, as you can see it has actually provided uh, the first name and last name. So, spring still uh, is able to figure out what are the uh, properties it actually needs. So, for first name it is the setter for this set first name and la for last name it is the set last name. And then uh, since we have configured this two string method basically it is printing that artist information here. So, that means this bean is actually uh, uh, getting created inside uh, this particular artist main uh, here in this I spring IOC container and we are able to access the artist bean. So, far we have seen constructor based uh, dependency injection as well as setter based dependency injection. Now, uh, with both the approaches we can actually initialize our objects and we can actually get our beans. But now the question is which approach shall we use whether constructor based or setter based dependency injection. Now, uh, this uh, there is a nice explanation provided in spring uh, framework reference documentation. I have captured this uh, from there. So, what they are saying is uh, since you can mix constructor based and setter based DI it is a good rule of thumb to use constructor for mandatory dependencies and setter methods for configuration methods for optional dependencies. Now, uh, spring team uh, they generally advocates constructor injection as it lets you implement application components as immutable objects and ensures that required dependencies are not null. So, basically you have a uh, uh, control uh, how your objects are getting created you are not letting the users to uh, uh, simply skip some parameters you are asking them to pass those parameters. Furthermore, uh, constructor injected components are always returned to the client code in a fully initialized state. So, that you do not have uh, anything left out as I said earlier. As a side note however, a uh, large number of constructor arguments is a bad code smell as, as that indicates your uh, class is probably doing too much and you should uh, consider splitting it into uh, different uh, classes. So, that we can still ensure that single responsibility principle. Uh, however, uh, one more thing with setter injection is uh, setter injection should primarily only be used for optional dependencies that can be assigned reasonable default values within the class. Otherwise, not null check uh, needs to be performed everywhere in the code wherever we are using dependency. Uh, one benefit of setter injection is that setter methods make objects of that class amendable to reconfigure or re injection later. So, uh, for example, when you are using JMX uh, M beans, uh, we can basically get hold of our objects and we can change their parameters through the setter call. 
So uh, another option is another thing is uh, use the DS style that makes uh, the most sense for particular classes. Sometimes when dealing with third party classes for which you don't have the source, the choice is made for you. For example, if a third party class does not expose any setter methods, then constructor injection may be the only available form of DI. So again, uh, based on uh, the choice or situation given, we can select what option is uh, most suitable to us and we can take the call which whether to use constructor based injection or setter based injection. In this lecture, we are going to look into the dependency resolution process. So we have seen we are creating the bin definition and then we are creating the a class a application context or the spring IOC container and then getting the bin from it. But what is happening internally? Let's have a look at that. The application context is created and initialized with configuration metadata, which is nothing but that uh, class path application context where we are supplying the uh, XML file or in, in terms of annotation config ap application context, we are supplying the configuration metadata class. So that with that we are initializing our application context and it is getting uh, initialized. Now uh, as part of initialization process uh, for each of the bean its dependencies are expressed in form of properties, constructor arguments or arguments to the static factory method. So so far we have seen uh, when we have created that person class we are actually passing the constructor arguments person ID, first name and last name and uh, or in other case for artist we are passing those uh, artist class uh, we, we actually pass the, uh, the first name and last name those properties in sub properties. So far we have not seen the static factory or um, uh, this this will be seeing later when we will be doing Java based configuration how to configure static factory um, bean and to get those beans from there. But uh, the idea is uh, the dependencies or um, the parameters uh, for that particular bean is expressed in terms of uh, these options. Next, each property or construct argument that is a value type is converted from its specified format to the actual type of that property or constructor argument. We have seen this point earlier so that uh, we have seen that ID was uh, passed as a string on that ID and value equal to uh, one we have provided where uh, we had that uh, value given as string but the actual type in the class of that particular type ID was integer but Spring was successfully converted that string value to integer and we have also seen when we change that integer, um, that particular value uh, in the XML configuration to some uh, random string, it failed that we got number format exception. So Spring is basically taking care of that part as well as part of uh, Spring bean creation. And then at the end, uh, Spring container validates the configuration of each bean. Uh, as and when uh, Spring bean initializes that uh, container, uh, uh, spring when the container is basically uh, loading all the beans it validates the bean uh, bean configuration and then uh, it just load that bean so so far we have seen a uh, normal bean creation in those cases for both constructor injection as well as setter based injection we have created normal bean definition where bean uh, basically we created the bean through constructor arguments or through properties but that uh, I, the difference was uh, in that case uh, we had only used value types. We have not passed any um, reference type, but that's uh, uh, seldom the case uh, in case of actual um, and application. So beans will be probably talking to each other, so they will be referencing with each other, so that this is known as bean collaboration. So they reference each other as and when they need. So one typical example is we have taken the person. Uh, class in that uh, per person pojo we had just given ID first name and last name but let's say the person has address but address is not a normal uh, type uh, it's not a, um, a normal type it's a reference type or it's a class type so how do we refer that so in this video we are going to look into uh, that so we'll be having a person class it will be referring to um, address uh, and let's see how exactly we do this So I'm again back to Spring Tool Suite. Uh, here uh, in STS, I'm going to create a new package. So let's give that package name as uh, bin collaboration. Uh, what I'll do is uh, in our earlier uh, project ar earlier videos we had created the person object I am uh, going to refer to that so that we can save some time so this is our uh, person object in our new package and let's close all other old uh, stuffs 
what we are going to do is uh, let us create another object first the address object, I am sorry address class. So, it is in a typical address we will have a private string let us say unique name and then private string street and then we have area and we have pin right. So, uh, let us here create normal setter getter setters. So, I am creating the uh, uh, getters and setters here because you will be anyway it does not matter we can you can choose to create a constructor or getter setters any type of injections to be fine. So, let us create the both getters and setters. So, I have created both the getters and setters for all four properties and then last thing I will be doing is we will be adding the two string method. So, that we can uh, actually print this in our console with appropriate values. So, our address object is uh, address class is created. So, this is again uh, POJO. We have given the two string method and we have provided those getters and setters, right. Let us have a reference. Let us say in our person class we have this address, right. So, a private address, address. So, we have added one address and uh, now uh, let us uh, create the I just use a shortcut here control 1 on the property name and it prompt it allows me to uh, generate the getters and setters. I just want the getter here. So, I will put it here. We have the getter and let us uh, change that to string again and let us regenerate it this time along with the address right. So, uh, now the change here is uh, we have uh, we have one type which is not a, a simple type, it is a class type uh, or the reference type and that reference type we are actually supplying here and also we are doing this dot address equal to address. So, we have now a fourth argument added uh, in our constructor fourth parameter. Uh, now, let us uh, create the constructor uh, sorry let us create the configuration file uh, we will be using the same conf uh, we will just copy this and paste it. We will see bin collaboration 1. In this case now uh, we have to create the other other bin. Let us stick to the name configuration which we have used in our earlier videos. So, uh, this is the bin uh, we have created, but now uh, there is a fourth argument, fourth constructor argument which will be the address type, but let us first create the address uh, bin. So, bin id equal to address and class equal to it is the same package, same, uh, same part. So, let me keep this here for some time. So, in address we are using basic getters and setters and we have these parameters unit name street area and pin. Uh, Let us create those properties. So, property name unit name value equal to let us say unit 67 and same thing for we have street here unit name we have given we have provided the street and then the area and then the pin. So, let us say pin is some pin 76931 and area is let us say some area let us give something ABC uh, let us give something 7 by 8 some some street right. So, we had created this um, address class here and uh, we have this unit name street area and pin. Now, the fourth argument was here uh, constructor argument constructor arg name is here uh, the address 
but now uh, we cannot reference it with value type because it is not a simple value. So, we will be using ref. So, that is the reference. If you actually come here and uh, do basically you have for support for uh, these four which we have last three we have already seen name, index and type and uh, value is we have already used the ref is the last one. So, we just refer with this bin a d d r e s s. So, that is the uh, reference name for the address bin. Right. So, uh, we have actually created all of this properly. This is showing some exception. Ad okay, saying address class is not found. Okay, the package is different. Package is collaboration. So, we have to change the package. Since you, you copied it from the earlier project, the package uh, we kept it as is, we do not want that. So, now both the errors are gone because you are referring to the correct package. Now, what happens when we uh, ask Spring give us the Spring, uh, this person bin? Now, Spring, uh, Spring uh, determines that okay, there is a constructor argument address of uh, address type, but this address object is not initialized. So, Spring when it goes back and first create this address and now since address is a plain uh, plain type there is no uh, reference so address can be uh, created without any further uh, dependency resolution process it creates the address and just inject the address here and then we got the we are getting the finally fully constructed person object now let's uh, uh, create our main method so uh, this time again i'm going to use person main and uh, we will be having our main method. Let us again this part will be quite similar to what we have done earlier. Let us copy and paste it here. Only thing changes is the application context file name. Okay. So, what we have done is we have actually uh, uh, given the definition here in our uh, application context file application context, uh, this application context bin, uh, okay, we have incorrectly modified this file. So, let us use this, okay. So, instead of uh, using uh, the bin call one, I incorrectly modified that application context constructor, the old uh, file. So, but anyway, we are here we have the correct um, bins which we are actually looking for. Only thing changes is in our person main, uh, we are going to use the bin which currently uh, the application context file name which currently has all these things. Now, let us execute this. So, we are getting some error, it is saying no qualifying type of bin XML config person. Okay. So, again uh, there is some typing issue here. Okay. So, it is saying uh, spring constructor com code font and spring config xml config constructor. So, it is going to the wrong. Uh, okay. So, here uh, basically we need to go to this, I will close uh, all the, all of these Java files and then this is our class person main and here we have application context constructor xml and application context constructor xml is referring correctly. So, let us execute this. Still some issue, uh, no qualifying bin of com, so it is basically referring to some wrong uh, configuration file again. So, application context constructor, okay. So, see here is the problem. We are trying to get a person. Uh, which is from the other class. So, we do not have this person here. So, this is what happens when we just copy paste. We need person of our of of which one is here in our package, but we are directly referring to this package, this one which is wrong. Now, let us execute. So, we can see uh, we have our uh, person ID, first name, last name, address and all those things getting printed properly. We have this unique name and unique information also getting printed properly. 
So, that is uh, that means actually spring is uh, finding out the dependency and then injecting it uh, to the person class. So, this we have seen with the uh, constructor injection right, we can do the same thing with the setter based injection. So, let us quickly have a look at the setter based injection as well. We'll just rename it as setter two, and this time I'll make sure we're opening this. Uh, so we are uh, we don't need all these things. We just need the properties. So property, 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 and property here, right? So uh, address class is already having those uh, with the properties. So no need to change anything here. Only thing uh, look here, uh, this is the difference uh, instead of uh, passing a construct argument, we are setting it property name equal to address and still uh, we are referring as wrap equal to address, right. So, um, only thing we have to change here in that uh, person is we cannot have this constructor because we are not doing constructor injection or uh, let us just comment out that constructor part now and we will be generating our getters and setters. So, let us generate the getters and setters. We have generated the getters and setters and a two string is already there. So, no more uh, changes. So, I just comment out this constructor part because we do not want to uh, use this constructor uh, injection and we just want to rely only on getters and setters. Anything else we missed? No. Uh, so, let us uh, go to our person main class and try to run this time. Okay, we got some exception. Okay, so what we did wrong is we are still referring to the application or context constructor. We need to use the setter two because we are using the setter two file where we have the actual definition now. And person class remains same. Let's try executing again. Okay. So, this time we are able to uh, get the data, sorry for those uh, type uh, configuration issues. So, we have person id equal to 1, first name, last name and then the address information. So, with setter based reference also we could uh, achieve uh, the same what we could uh, do through constructor injection. So, the idea is uh, again, uh, mm, so now you can think uh, basically you can have uh, um, a full uh, sort of beans which uh, they can refer uh, to each other. Uh, so, for example, you have a let us say class which is a uh, configuration configuration class which basically will have plain getters and setters and you will set the values through different mode. So, in these cases we are actually hard coding the values. So, in, in cases uh, some cases you might not hard code you can use basically use spring expression language to get those values from different places class path or uh, system level variable or things like that. We do not hard code these values. And um, you can have those uh, beans as many beans as you want, and then you can basically link together those beans based on the reference type. So one uh, one exa one uh, uh, example I could give is that Hikari CP configuration. If you have worked on Hikari CP database um, configuration file, they have Hikari config, which is a plain uh, uh, getter setter base uh, object. You can basically set all the required parameters uh, in Hikari config, and that Hikari config you can basically supply to Hikari data source. So Hikari data source expects a config. So basically, you can uh, use the same uh, same way. You can actually create Hikari config and set all the properties, and then you can use Hikari data source uh, pass those pass that particular Hikari config and. That this this is an one way uh, one one real life example where people use Hikari CP database uh, configuration. In the previous lecture, we have seen how beans can refer to each other. So uh, we have seen it's a um, uh, it's a one way where we can actually achieve that object dependencies. Uh, now there could be scenarios where um, things can go wrong. So one such uh, example is circular dependency. Let's say if we use predominantly constructor based injection, it is possible to create an unresolvable circular dependency scenario. So for example, let's say we have class A, which requires an instance of class B through constructor injection. So while creating class A, you need an uh, instance of class B to fully construct the class A. But now uh, let's say um, class B also requires an instance of class A through constructor injection. Uh, so now if we configure beans for class A and B to be injected into each other, the spring IOC container 
uh, will uh, will be in trouble now. So because uh, it so when it sees that class A requires class B, it will go and try to resolve class B first. So in our earlier example, we have seen like when we have person and address. So Spring IOC container is uh, seeing that okay, person class person who before creating this person being I need an address. So it is going to create an address and creating the address and injecting the address to person. In the similar scenario. When class A is detecting that uh, when Spring is creating class A, it is finding okay. I need a class B before I fully construct class A. So it is going to class B, and when it is trying to create class B, it is again checking oh oh I need another an instance of class A. So now there is a cycle which can never be uh, we, we can't break the cycle because class they are depending on each other. So if we configure beans for class A and B to be injected into each other, the Spring IOC container detects the circular reference at runtime. And it will actually throw a, a bin currently in creation exception. Let's see this uh, uh, in an example. Uh, for example, uh, here we have uh, two uh, uh, bins. One bin is department, which is uh, IO uh, uh, core fountain, and this department class, which is having one reference of employee, and uh, this reference type is EMP. And then we have employee uh, bin, which is basically referring to the department. Let's see what happens if we try to uh, do such thing. Okay, let's create a new package. I will uh, create a new package and name it as com code fountain spring core and uh, we'll name it as circular dot dependency circular dot dependency in this uh, first will be let's close everything else we'll create a class called department in department uh, there will be a class called uh, reference called private employee emp and then um, so as of now, employee is not employee class is not created. So we are getting compilation error, and we are going to soon create it. So public department, we will supply employee emp, and let's set it this dot emp equal to. EMP. So we have created the uh, employee object. Now let's uh, create this class employee. Now I have created the employee as well. So since employee is created, department is this is fine. And similarly, let's uh, in employee class let's have a dependency of department, private, department, department. And here we'll have public uh, employee. This is the constructor, and it has a reference of department. So department dpt. And then let's set it this dot department equal to department. So, so far we are able to create uh, these classes. There are department class which is referring to uh, employee and uh, employee is actually uh, referring to department. Now, let us create a new application context. So, I will just name it circular. So we have created a circular XML. In this, uh, we don't need all these things. So what we'll do is this will be our department first, and the package is com code fountain circular this dependency and uh, department. So let's give it as a D E P A R T M E N T department, and it has a constructor arg it has name as let's say dpt right in the uh, sorry this would be employee it has a reference to employee and this reference will be emp right and we don't need these two we we'll just remove we we'll remove these two similarly i'll just create the employee uh, bin in employee bin, we will have EMP here and it will refer to employee and uh, this reference will be for department. It has a reference to 
department. So, what we have done is, so we have created the department. So, in department we are giving name as IDS department and it has a reference to employee. So, employee is actually we are referring here and similarly we have employee uh, class. So, we are creating the employee bin, we are given that ID as employee and the fully qualified class name as employee and employee has a reference to the department. So, DEPT which we have provided here. Now, um, let us say let us try to create the main class. This time I will rename it as circular main and okay. So, let us create the main method. Okay. First thing first we need an application context first, application context equal to new class path XML application context, class path XML application context and we need to pass our application context file name application context circular dot xml right. So, we have passed it and let us try to access one of the bin. Let us say I am trying to do get bin of our department type department dot class right. Now, what, what we are doing here is we are just doing the same thing what we have done so far. We are uh, referring uh, creating that spring IRC container, we are supplying our application context circular dot XML and then we are trying to access the department class. Now, if we run this particular file, so we are going to get some sort of exception. So, we are getting this bin currently in creation exception. So, error creating bin uh, department. Uh, requested bin is currently in creation is there an unresolved circular reference. So, spring is able to detect that uh, circular reference and it is reporting an error that bin currently in creation exception. So, far we have seen uh, that we can create as many as bins in our XML bin configuration file as you want. So, uh, but there is a problem associated with it. We do not want to put every single bin in our application in one configuration file. So, um, what we do is uh, we will be having probably different modules, application modules or application components and we will be segregating the components in their uh, respective configuration files, right. Uh, but then um, the bins has a dependency with each other. Now, how are we going to um, resolve the dependency? So, one um, option is that we segregate all beans uh, into their respective uh, configuration files, a separate metadata configuration file and then uh, we just import that XML file that import resource um, in our uh, dependent uh, bean configuration file. So, one example here is uh, for example, we can actually use we have parent configuration here and then we have a child configuration and then we have sub child configurations. So, every layer uh, we are just in parent configuration we are only pushing uh, we are actually putting only those uh, configurations which are common to all of these uh, child configuration files and so on. So, one example typical example will be uh, in our batch uh, spring batch if you have worked with spring batch uh, then probably you will know. So, in spring batch we have a configuration uh, for each batch we have a reader and writer and optional processor. So, each reader uh, basically reads some data uh, from some uh, source and then it process and write with, write into some sort of uh, storage. Now, uh, let us say uh, in a typical example we have uh, multiple batch jobs right. So, multiple batch job does multiple uh, um, activities and each batch has its own reader and writer. Now, each batch probably uh, let us say in, in this uh, scenario is reading from a database. It is reading from database and writing into uh, the process record into some other table in some database or some some uh, medium. Now, one thing which would be common for uh, all these batches will be the data source configuration or the transaction configuration right. So, uh, in these cases uh, we do not want to duplicate those information in our respective batch jobs. So, let us say the data source uh, example we are let us say we are using Hika recipe data source configuration. So, probably we might have initialized our uh, Hika recipe configuration data source configuration or let us say we are using spring transaction. Uh, we are using we have initialized our transaction manager all those things. We do not want that information to be duplicated in all our batches batch A, B, C because if later on let us say tomorrow we want to uh, change something let us say from uh, Hika recipe we want to move to 
some other database configuration or other data source configuration. We do not want to come back to each of these uh, bad job uh, and then change individually. For example, let's say in a uh, big application, you might have hundreds of batch XML files configured. You don't want to go back and change each of them. Instead, what we could do is we could extract out all these common uh, configuration into a uh, into a common uh, separate configuration file, which will be actually uh, having only the data uh, data source information as well as let's say the transaction information, transaction manager information, and then in each batch they just import this uh, uh, this uh, segregated file, the common configuration file. So that later point in time, if we, if we need to do some changes. Uh, what we could do is we can only modify in one file and that will reflect in all the batches. So this is a typically uh, say a clean or a, a separate, uh, separate uh, the, the, the responsibilities or the configuration is aggregated. We do not uh, need to change everything. So this will be, uh, this is a, a pretty handy uh, process. Let's uh, see this in uh, an example. So for example, let's say we have um, two different beans. One is uh, artist, right? And um, there is something called instrument. So let's say each artist has uh, some uh, one or more instrument. But we don't know uh, the instrument configuration. We just uh, can refer to the instrument. Then uh, what we could do is we could segregate uh, this instrument configuration into a separate file, uh, separate configuration file, Spring um, XML file. And then we could actually uh, import uh, this uh, instrument uh, configuration file in our actual uh, uh, the other configuration file. So Spring will ensure that it uh, 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 download, uh, it merges, or uh, it basically will have uh, that uh, bean information available. And when it uh, initializes that uh, Spring IOC container, you will have both uh, artist and instrument being available in the configure uh, in the IOC container. So this is similarly uh, similar to a Java. So basically, we have uh, we are uh, objects are referring to each other, right? So each uh, let's see, you have uh, artist class in one package and instrument class in another package. So when you use instrument uh, in artist artist class, we need to import that package, right? So similar thing, we are importing the XML file here. Let's see this uh, in uh, code. So we'll create a, a new package, and uh, we'll have this. Uh, we'll name it uh, first as a bin uh, reference. So let's rename, uh, name it to bin import. Okay, and uh, let's close all this stuff. Uh, first thing, well, let's create the instrument. So each instrument has some sort of ID with it, and each instrument has some name. Okay, and let's create getters and setters for it. So we have created uh, the getters and setters as well as we are going to create the two string method. So this bean, uh, this instrument bean is uh, instrument class is ready. We can have uh, now. Let's define this uh, in our application context XML file. So in this case, we'll create a separate uh, application context file. So we've created application context instrument.xml and uh, let's create our uh, instrument bin here. So instrument and it is there, it is available in uh, this particular package. And there are no constructor args. We are using property. So property name equal to ID and value equal to let's give some name. And instrument name, uh, instrument name let's give as piano. So this is where our instrument um, uh, bean 
is created and it's uh, defined. Now let's create a new class called artist. So artist will have its uh, own name, private uh, string name, and artist. Let's say artist has an instrument. have misspelled in and uh, let's say here also we are using get a sitters Let's use the true string method. So we have created the artist class and it has this instrument dependency. Now let's create another uh, application context with this artist object. So let's open artist in this case, uh, okay, uh, dot artist and artist will have a name. So this part will keep as is. We'll give artist, let's say name is John Doe and property name equal to instrument. Whereas now here we have to use reference because we are using reference to instrument. Uh, Okay, here it will be artist instrument. One thing we have to do here is we are going to import uh, the resource which is application context instrument dot XML. So it's implemented and I think we have missed here to provide the class name. Now, now uh, let's create our main method. Just call it as only main. In this case, let's again initialize the uh, Spring IRC container. Spring application context. equal to new class path xml application context and uh, let's pass this so we'll be referring to application context artist dot xml and we'll try to get uh, get bin artist Now let's try to run it. Okay, as you can see, uh, we can actually have artist uh, name and artist instrument information here. So see, uh, we have not given that artist uh, that instrument information and bin information in our uh, this uh, uh, application context XML file, we have just uh, importing it. So Spring is ensuring that, okay, the reference instrument is not uh, here in this bin and it is actually going and looking into that application context instrument.xml. And uh, from here, it is actually creating that instrument bin and then uh, it is actually injecting that to the artist object. So this way we can actually have this uh, separate. Basically you can have not only one, you can have as many imports as you want. Um, as I said in the earlier example, maybe you can have uh, configuration for database, you can configuration for JMS, you can configuration for transactions. So you can actually segregate those um, uh, as per the logical uh, group you want and then you can import in the respective places. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about inner bin. 
so a bean element when put inside a property or constructor argument elements of another bean uh, that time we define that bean as a inner bean so um, if you can see uh, we have a bean artist uh, this artist bean is actually having a dependency of uh, instrument uh, so instead of uh, referring it uh, here property name equal to instrument and ref equal to provide the reference we are just putting the bean here so this is uh, one way of uh, creating uh, another uh, creating a bean so we are creating the bean here uh, note that we have not given any name because this is an inner bean and uh, there is no uh, it's uh, it is enclosed inside instrument let's say uh, uh, let's uh, see this in our code uh, okay so let me create uh, another configuration file so spring xml configuration file i'll just copy uh, application context and i'll name it as inner bean let's open this inner bean.xml okay so we have artist here and instrument we are referring as normal instrument uh, so instead of referring here what we will do is uh, we will have property tag and we will put the bean definition here so I'll get the instrument definition uh, from here and we place it like this and we we'll just remove the ID we don't need an ID here and I'll just do control shift F to uh, format it properly now we have a uh, property name and property instrument right uh, let's try to create um, this I'll just I'll use the same uh, configuration file here Uh, only thing I'll do is this, I'll just reinstantiate this application uh, uh, context part with the new configuration file in our uh, bin. Right. And uh, now, if I try to run, so we could see uh, that we are able to access the artist information. Name is this, instrument is this, because. Uh, the bean is actually in uh, inside a property file and it is uh, acting as inner bean so this is the uh, concept of inner bean so you whenever we put one bean inside another bean the internal bean uh, is known as inner bean so so far we have seen um, beans with uh, normal types or we have created beans with uh, a specific reference type but let's say we need uh, our collection java collections we need a list or we need a set or we need a property right how do we achieve this uh, so as you can see in the configuration uh, we can actually do that as well so we can create a list uh, we can create a set we can create a map and also we can create a reference type as well so let's see this in a uh, in code uh, to uh, get a better understanding so what I'll do is uh, let's uh, create a new package. I'll call this package as our base package and then collections. Okay. And we'll have uh, import. Uh, okay, we'll have collection folder. This is the class name. In this class, what we're going to have is Let's uh, quickly have private list of uh, string uh, my list. So this is one. This is a list. Also, uh, let's say I want to have a set. So I can have private set of string and I can pass my set. Or let's say I want to even have a map. I can have map of string comma string my map okay and let's have the uh, associated getters and setters so i'm selecting all three of them and i'm generating the getters and setters for this uh, so getters and setters are there right now uh, let's say i want to populate my list my set or my map now uh, let's go uh, create a new configuration file uh, spring bean definition file so with this uh, i'll just create a application context and i'll just tell it uh, name it as collection
So, here I am going to remove all of them. Okay. So, uh, let us give our bean a name, bean, uh, then I will give bean id equal to let us say uh, my collection and what is the class name? Class name will be uh, equal to com dot, okay, let us copy this uh, package name. So, we are giving our fully qualified class name dot, here I will be getting collection holder. Now, uh, first let us say populate the uh, list part. So, we need to uh, put some uh, list items. So, what is the property here? The Again, it is a property. So, let us give property name equal to uh, my list. So, it string can actually access my list and then I am going to put the props. So, this is a new item we are going to put in. In within props, okay. So, props actually is for properties, we will come to that later. Uh, we currently let us populate the list first. So, we are having list, and within the list, we have the value. So, list value. So, let us say I am giving uh, value 1 and another value I am giving as value 2. Similarly, let us say uh, we have another we have another property, right? So, we have another property called my set. In my set, I am going to use here as set. So, I can actually have set and then I can provide the set of values. So, let us say again set we are just giving 1, 2, 3. or let us say let us give 1, 2 and 1 since it is set. So, the last one will be there. Then let us say uh, the last property we have is property type equal to my map. In my map, I am going to have uh, map information here and map since map is a, we have entry. So, entry now in entry we have two things one is key. So, let us say key is 1 and uh, or let us say let let name it as name 1 and uh, let us say we have a value, value equal to let us say value 1 and the self closing tag and we have such few names like name 2, name 3 and value 2, value 3. So, basically what we have done is we have created the collection holder class in that we have defined three properties one is list, one is set and one is map. So, for each one of them we are actually creating the list here, creating the set here and creating the map here. So, Spring will ensure that okay, uh, um, there is a list property involved. So, Spring will main, uh, create a new list, put this value and inject that to collection holder. Similarly, it will do the same thing for set, it will see that there is a set property. Uh, so, it will just create that. Uh, set and then put these values inside that set and then it will again inject it to collection holder class and same thing it will same thing will be done for the my map as well. Now since this, uh, so this is just a normal bean, uh, we have this bean information, we have the properties, only difference is uh, it is not a regular uh, reference or value type, it is just a list type here, it is just a set here, it is just a map here, right. So let us create that main class, so we will just write collection main. And we are actually going to create this and application context, application context equal to new class path XML application context and we give application context collection dot XML. Now we are going to do a couple of things. First thing is from application context dot get bean, we are going to get our bean name which will be collection holder dot class and then from there we will get our uh, list, we will print the list. Similarly, or let us do one thing, instead of accessing it again and again, let us store it somewhere. So, uh, collection holder so we got our collection holder and here we are going to use that reference. So, we got a collection holder dot list, collection holder dot 
set and we will be having collection under dot map right so let's try to print this and see what it is printing see we can see that in list it has printed value 1 value 2 we have used a set so in set uh, set doesn't support duplicate values so even though we have given 1 to 1 only 1 is kept and then it has the uh, map so we have name value pair name 1 value 1 name 2 value 2 name 3 value 3 now let's do one more thing let's try to get the type so what type uh, spring normally creates dot uh, looking for this um, get class dot get name then this and this so it will basically tell us uh, what is the default uh, list type spring uses what is the default set and what is the default map spring uses right so let's rerun this again so you can see by default it is giving a uh, list wise is using array list not linked list for set it's not uh, it's using linked has set and for map it is using linked has map so these are the default um, uh, types spring is using right now uh, that's fine now, now let's say we want to have uh, uh, we have passed uh, simple types let's say we want to have list of uh, some reference object right how do we do that so uh, let's go back to our collection holder class and um, let's add one more uh, list here list or any any collection type we can add but let's take list let's say i want to have player information and my players right so uh, player class is not available let's create the player class first so create class player and uh, let's say in this case the player has just name then i get string name and uh, we just have one constructor i'll use constructor injection here so string name and we'll use this dot name equal to name so we have a uh, player information player uh, pojo created now uh, go back to our uh, collection class and let's create couple of players so we'll have bean uh, this bean id equal to player one and class equal to so uh, it's then the same package let's copy from here and uh, let's put it back here and we'll give player uh, okay so player has a constructor args available pass so constructor args and player name yeah this is this name is name and value equal to let's say player one uh, so let's create a couple of them. So I have player one, player two, and player three. Player two and player three, and uh, the name also. Let's give player two and player three, right? So let's. So we have uh, uh, this at the moment. So we have created three players, and they are ready. So connection holder. Uh, Let's close this. So I have closed the ones which we are uh, not using. Collection holder uh, here. Now my players, we have to create the getter setters for this. Control 1, I will create the getter setters from here. Now uh, in our application context here, I can actually have another property property name equal to my players and here I can actually give a list and then uh, basically instead of value I can actually have reference reference so here I could have actually the reference and I can use the 
reference here the tag is so you can have two actually reference bean or reference parent so reference bean is let's say player one and i use the self closing tag so reference bean is player one and then player two player three so these are the three players now if i use if i go back to my collection main and then try to grab this and let's print my players so list of players will be printed let's try to get that okay so you can uh, see that okay player one player two since you have not implemented the two string method it's uh, coming a bit uh, ugly so let's implement that information here and two string just return that um, return the player name So we will use the name so player some space and then the name so that's what we want to so now uh, let's rerun it again okay so since it's inside a list we're getting this double bracket um, okay, so player one, player two, player three. It's printing the player information. Let's say we, we want to have a property as well, right? Let's say we want to have private properties. Properties, right? So we can actually have our properties. property name equal to uh, okay we have not uh, defined here I want to create it as it is so we got the properties here and uh, we can use the props and in props Let's see what we have. We have prop. So what is a prop? Let's say my username is user, and um, let's say we are having database properties. So my username is there, and let's say I have couple of them. Uh, I have password, and I have let's say uh, DB connection URL. Let's say some URL and password is some password, right? So properties got properties also is there. Now uh, let's go back to a collection folder and we have already created the getters and administrator. So we can do a get properties. If I now try to grab that connect from collection folder dot get properties, let's see how what what we are getting. So as you can see, oh, we actually are able to get the properties, password, uh, connection URL, and username. So you know uh, now how exactly we are going. We can uh, create uh, this Java collection uh, stuffs. So we have here. We can basically uh, create any type. Uh, for example, if you see, we got type here. We can have. Uh, we have actually so many different different types. Set uh, props, some map, list, I don't know. Array so far we have seen bin, uh, list, map, props, ref, uh, set, value, and all this. Uh, so uh, this is pretty much about uh, Java collections. Um, uh, so uh, in next video we'll see how we can actually merge to different collections. In our previous lecture we have seen um, managing Java collections. So we have actually created a class and we created a list, uh, created a set. Um, we created a map, properties, and different reference type. And we have seen how uh, Spring is actually able to understand and uh, automatically injecting the different type of um, uh, collections. It has actually injected list, it has injected set, map, um, and all those types. In this particular video, we are going to look into merging different collections. So what do I mean by merging different collections? Merging, uh, sorry, different collections means here the collection, which uh, the same type of collection, which is available in different classes. 
okay so let's say we have a class called details class and that's an uh, abstract class there i have a property um, there is a java properties uh, and i have on email email one and now uh, that information now in my um, there is a child class which basically extends this uh, parent class uh, there i have another property and when i get uh, when i try to get that um, property in my child class i want to get this information merged and i want to get a common property uh, in the properties i want to i want to see both the values so in this case if you see we have our details class we have one properties and in that we are storing email one and the value and in our email details class which is the child class we have another property uh, which is uh, details uh, name is details uh, in that actually we have a uh, property uh, key as uh, email2 and the email2 value now let's say when i'm trying to access i want uh, to have both of these two how i can do that so uh, this is where uh, this merging part comes into picture and uh, spring actually efficiently manages this note that we can't merge different types uh, it can't be possible like i have a uh, set here in details class and i have a list here in uh, email uh, child class uh, it, it it's not possible to merge this okay so let's see this in uh, an example so basically we have this details class which is abstract class and then it uh, has property and similarly email details class it has this um, uh same prop, uh, property details only thing the difference here is we are using a property uh, attribute called merge equal to true so we are actually instructing spring that when you create this bin uh, uh, you make sure you have a parent here so if spring knows okay there is a parent available so it will go uh, to these details and uh, make sure like okay um, this uh, parent property and this property needs to be merged right because you have given merge equal to true so let's write a code so we'll be creating our details class we'll be also we'll be also creating our um, email details class and then we'll see so head over to the uh, uh, spring tool suite head over to the spring tool suite and then uh, let's see how exactly we can create uh, this uh, property merging so let's say i have a new package uh, com dot code fountain dot uh, spring dot core dot uh, let's say i'll give property dot merge and let's say uh, we'll have one class called uh, details class okay so uh, this is an abstract class and here um, let's say i'm having a property uh, uh, information so private uh, properties uh, call details right uh, and i have uh, one uh, getters and setters for uh, this property so i've selected the details generated the property so i have this details class and let's say i have another class called email details this is just a random uh, name and i let's say this class extends uh, this property um, extends this detail cl details class and similarly it also has uh, properties details and its name is um, it's a private and uh, same way what we have done for details we have this uh, getters and setters in the other class as well so just let's copy paste it from here and then uh, let's place it into our email details class right so these two are done let's create this uh, these two bin in our xml configuration so we'll just say collection merge and let's go to our collection merge xml and here we need to create uh, these two bin definition so first bin is details so package is different we are actually using uh, property merge dot details and one thing is we need to let spring know that it's abstract so we are going to use abstract equal to true right so we have mentioned that and then we have um, our props so property is first thing is property name is details and we it's a property props so you have to use props and uh, 
we will be using the key value pair here uh, sorry uh, so we have uh, okay, prop key is there we have to use the prop and then the key so uh, let's say the key name is here um, email 1 and uh, the value is email at admin at uh, some xyz dot com right similarly we have another bin uh, called uh, email details so let's create this bin here uh, so it's pretty pretty much same email details it is having details but only thing is there is no there is no abstract here it's not an abstract class but it has a parent so Spring needs to know that it has a parent, so which is details, so parent equal to details. And in props, we are going to use merge equal to true, right. So we have done this, we have created the details bin, we have actually provided the uh, details uh, bin here information. And let us change that property key to email to, and let us say this is a user, uh, user at xyz.com, right. So uh, now let us uh, we are going to uh, run uh, create our main class. And in that, uh, let us run through uh, main method application context application context equal to new class path XML application context and then we will be providing our application context uh, hyphen collection and then merge dot XML right. So, this is what we have created application context collection merge dot XML and in that uh, application context dot get uh, bin. So, we are going to be, uh, get that email details bin here and then from there we are going to get details right uh, all, and let us do a sysout so that we can see what is inside that properties. So, once we execute this, okay we got some exception. So, it is saying offending resource uh, application context uh, collection merge. So, configuration problem bin name details is already used in these bins. Okay. Uh, so, okay, uh, the problem. The problem is we did not change the bin name. We cannot have same bin name because it is a bin ID. Sorry, bin ID we did not change. So, bin uh, already one ID, ID is unique. So, one ID is already created details. So, it cannot create the other one with the same, same identifier. Now let us uh, try to run it and we can see uh, Spring has actually merged. So I had given one email one which was in our uh, parent class in the details class and uh, Spring, uh, email details which is uh, in the child class. Uh, so, but eventually when you get this Spring has merged these two. Now there are multiple real life examples of, uh, of this case. So for example, I will tell one uh, uh, scenario. Uh, let us say uh, you have an application and your application is basically supporting um, multiple uh, database databases. So, for example, your application can run in Oracle, your application can run uh, in MySQL, it can run in PostgreSQL or you can support some uh, some other database type. But now what you want to do is, uh, so uh, 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 if the databases are different, there can be some SQL queries which probably uh, will be common throughout the uh, application uh, throughout these uh, databases, but there will be some uh, app, uh, there will be some uh, uh, SQL queries which will be basically different in uh, different different databases. So, one particular query might be Oracle specific, uh, but the same query there is a syntactical change you know, when you execute in DB2 or MySQL, right. How do you manage those things? So, in that in those cases actually what we can do is we can have a bin, uh, we can have a bin let us say common bin, in that common bin you define the common uh, class and then let us say you have a map, in that map you keep a key value. So, in the first bin you have all those uh, common properties right and then you have a bin a uh, separate separate bin for uh, separate separate database types. Let us say I have Oracle and Oracle I will mention the parent equal to the previous one and then I will uh, just keep providing my uh, other uh, properties which are specific to Oracle. Then let us say I have one for MySQL and then I will be providing for MySQL. Then when actually we load these things, um, since uh, that time let us say I need Oracle, I am my application is running in Oracle database at the moment. So, what will happen is I will query through, I will get the Oracle bin. So, what will happen is I will get the Oracle specific queries plus my common set of queries. So, this will give us uh, the common set of uh, queries for Oracle. So, I will get Oracle specific queries plus my common set of queries. Similarly, when I am going to run for MySQL, 
in mysql i'll be getting the queries for mysql as well as i'll get the queries for the common script uh, so that uh, what happens is uh, i need not uh, in our uh, in our code we need not have that uh, queries hard coded okay uh, something underscore oracle something underscore mysql something underscore um, some other database type so this is a uh, one efficient way of uh, managing because spring is providing us that option so we can actually merge and get a common set for um, for for different different types so this database uh, is an example you might have some other type of example as well we have seen so far that uh, the beans can refer to each other through uh, references uh, the ref uh, attribute and we have also seen that um, spring ensures that whenever there is a dependent uh, bean uh, the dependent bean will be created first and then that dependent bean will be uh, injected to the actual bean object actual bean uh, when the actual object is creating created but there are times when we want to force the container to load one or more beans before that actual dependent bean is loaded we want to be explicit we don't want to uh, just rely on spring to uh, do it for us we just want to tell spring hey be uh, spring container this is why uh, this is the bean i want but see this is the uh, this are the following uh, beans which are, are actually uh, my current bean is depending on so what we will do is we will just uh, pass that with uh, depends on uh, so uh, with that particular clause spring i see just initialize depending beans before creating the actual bin so uh, this is just explicit instruction to the spring container that before you initialize the actual uh, spring bin you make sure you initialize those other two uh, uh, other two or uh, four or how many number of dependent dependency you have right uh, and one another thing is in the similar way uh, when spring destroys your current bean it will also make sure that it is actually destroying the depending beans first and then it is destroying the actual bean so let's see in the code uh, how exactly we do it so for example in this case this is uh, just a simple example we have a bean called initialization init bean so we are just uh, writing initializer uh, so we just we want that initializer bean to get loaded first uh, before our uh, this initializer dependent bean uh, gets loaded so we have created another bean called init dependent and then in that uh, we are just um, explicitly telling spring that my current bean this init dependent bean is depending on the init bean so spring will make sure that this init bean is getting created first and then the init dependent bean is getting created so in this example uh, what we'll do is we'll write uh, sim a similar thing we'll write uh, initializer class uh, and then we'll just uh, print some information in that and then we'll be creating the initializer dependent uh, bean and then we will just uh, let that okay um, we have uh, this dependency but note one thing here there is no reference here but there is explicit dependency between these two bins for example uh, let's say my initializer uh, is something where i am initializing my database connections or doing something uh, or you know, registering my database driver which needs to happen before this bin uh, is getting uh, loaded so in this case what happens is uh, since there is no reference spring probably will not have information that okay uh, i need to load that bin first but for this bin initialize dependent bin to work uh, we just we need uh, this initializer to initialize first so we are actually providing the depends on init so that uh, we are telling spring that though there is no direct references and all those stuff but for this initializer dependent to work this bin needs to be created first and spring obeys this contract so let's create this and um, uh, these two classes and see how it works so in this case we are going to uh, create a new package again uh, we will give this package a name i will tell that is uh, dot depends on right so uh, i'll close all other structs and we will have uh, this new class called initializer so what we'll do is in this case we are going to do we'll not have anything we'll just print a static initializer in that uh, static uh, we we'll just print that um, initializer dot initializer dot class dot get name so we're just printing this class name in that right and then uh, we'll have uh, another class initializer dependent so in this class uh, again let's say in this class also we are let's say we're just having a method called uh, print okay and in this we are just 
printing again this dot get class dot get name right so we just we are just printing this and this method should not be private it should be public so that we can access it now let's create this uh, configuration file i'll just again copy paste i don't want to to from again from the beginning so here we'll give d e p e n d n on dot xml and give a hyphen here right so if we go to depends on dot xml we need to remove this part we don't need all those things so bin in here i'll give this id and let's say this is my init bin and the class i'm going to mention as okay let's copy this class fully qualified class name initializer and there is no refer no property nothing so we can simply create it like this and then we have init dependent so these two bins we have created only thing now we are going to uh, uh, provide that information that depends on and we'll say it depends on init right now let's go back and uh, create the main method so we are going to create the main method and uh, we will be initializing our sp string container so application context equal to new class path xml application context and then we'll be using application context the depends on dot xml and this will correct it and then let's say we want to get application context dot get bean and this is initialize dependent dot class and then we have a print method here now let's run this class and see how exactly it works okay uh, it's saying file not found exception so we have done something wrong here uh, application context depends on okay uh, so depends on there is a hyphen here So see, uh, it is actually printing the initializer first and then doing initializer dependent, right? So uh, Spring is actually ensuring that. Uh, see, we are we are only calling our print method, right? We are calling only print, but uh, Spring is actually loading. So this, uh, since we have called the static in that, so uh, in the um, initializer static. So whenever uh, this class gets loaded by Spring, this static will definitely get invoked. So that's the reason we are able to see this print. Uh, this initializer is getting printed. And the similar way, uh, when we are calling our actual uh, initial dependent class, we are seeing this print. So that, so that is the way uh, we can actually enforce uh, how this depends on. We can be very, we can exp uh, we can be explicit to the Spring IOC container that what all dependent uh, beans we have and we want. And note that we can actually have uh, multiple uh, depends on. So we can actually give a comma separated uh, uh, list here, and uh, Spring will ensure that all of them are actually loaded before our actual. Uh, depending bean is getting loaded in this video we are going to look uh, into lazy initialization so by default when spring load uh, beans it will be uh, eager initialization so uh, when we are actually supplying that application context configuration file or the java configuration file to spring um, uh, spring container it basically scans each of the beans and try loading each one of them so spring by default try to uh, load uh, those uh, as uh, at the time of um, it initialize that uh, spring IC container but there will be at times uh, where we want we don't want uh, those spring uh, uh, beans to be loaded uh, at the time of container initialization we want then uh, them to be loaded on demand so it is possible to load the beans on a lazy loading basis so so that spring will uh, uh, call the uh, load the bean as and when we call or we uh, we refer uh, the bean so uh, how we can do that uh, there is a property here again lazy init equal to true by default this is not set uh, so when we provide lazy init equal to true in our bin definition we are basically giving a spring uh, instruction that okay uh, we want this particular bin to be uh, lazy loaded and we don't want in this bin to be available 
So uh, we are not going for any code demonstration for this um, purpose, uh, for this particular uh, 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 demonstration. Uh, so we can actually create LAG in it uh, and then see how exactly uh, it's behaving. So far we have seen uh, we are loading only one XML file in the class path XML application context. But uh, we have the provision to load multiple XML files uh, in the same um, IOC container. Uh, so let's have a uh, look um, how we can do that. So here I have a class called uh, song and uh, song has two properties, song name and singer. And I have also uh, created the getters and setters for it as well as the two string method. And then we have one class called album. We have an album uh, name and then album name has its own getters and setters and it has uh, its two string method. Then I had gone ahead and created uh, the uh, uh, application context for album. Here uh, we are actually creating the album um, bin and uh, we are just keeping it in this string bin definition file. We also have uh, created a song album, uh, sorry song bin in that uh, we are actually creating this song uh, bin definition. We have given the singer name and then the song name. So we are creating the song bin. Then uh, in our main method, uh, main method we are actually uh, loading both the uh, both the X, uh, XML XML files together. So if you see in that class path XML application context, it is actually supporting um, uh, both of uh, these XML files. So basically, if we go to class path XML application context, uh, this particular uh, class, uh, this this particular constructor has a parameter is taking a variable arguments where args. So we can actually pass uh, as many application context file or the spring bin definition file we want. So it will take those many uh, application context files and it will load all of them. So in this case, uh, both of these uh, application context files are getting loaded and then what we are doing, we are actually uh, asking that application context or the spring IOC container to give that bin to us. Uh, so one is song and one is album. So uh, if I execute this, then uh, we should be actually seeing both the song and album information. So as you can see, uh, we can actually verify this. So actually song is getting printed, uh, song information as well as album information. So this is also another um, uh, example where we can uh, have uh, multiple XML files and we can load all of them in uh, same application context or same uh, Spring IOC container. So far we have seen uh, class path XML application context and we have seen that all application context uh, files or the spring bean definition files we are actually keeping in class path and class path XML application context is loading those uh, bean definitions and those beans uh, which are defined inside our bean definition file is accessible once that class path XML application context is loaded or the, or the spring IOC container is initialized. Now here is another um, uh, type of application context, uh, file system XML application context. So this is also as the name suggests XML. So this is capable of loading XML files. But the difference is this is not a class path XML application context. This is file system XML application context. So that means uh, the file system, it is loading the files from file system. So basically you can give any path, whether it's a relative path or absolute path, we can provide a path. And then uh, this XML uh, application context can actually go and uh, go to that particular path and look for that spring bean definition file and load the file. So let's see an example of this. So I have taken the previous example. In this now what we're doing is uh, instead of using uh, class path XML application context, as you can see, we are using file system XML application context. But in this case, we are uh, not uh, supplying on not only the uh, spring bean definition file, we are also supplying um, the complete path, the absolute path. And now we are mentioning that we are actually using file based file protocol so that we are giving file colon and then this slashes. Right. So we are actually uh, supplying this bean uh, uh, definition in this uh, application context album.xml. So we, if we go, our, uh, we have uh, this file in this location, uh, C drive drive with my courses directory, where I have application context album file. Now, uh, uh, if I uh, run this project, uh, run this program. So what we are doing is we are actually say in a similar way we are loading the application context that is uh, Spring RC container is initialized and we are trying to get the bin. So in, uh, in this case that album uh, dot uh, class. 
So this is the same bean uh, which you have seen earlier. So it will print the album name. So as you have executed this, and we could see uh, it's actually printing the album, album information. And uh, similar to uh, class path XML application context, file system XML application context is also capable of handling multiple XML files. So for example, let's say um, uh, if we use uh, two files, for example, and then the song one which we have written earlier. And let's say we are also trying to get um, the song dot class as well. So what we did is uh, um, earlier we were loading only one uh, Spring Bean definition file. Now we are loading uh, two Bean, uh, two Spring Bean definition files, and both the Bean files are actually um, Bean definition files are actually present here. Application context album and application context song. Now if I try to uh, run this project, we should be seeing information for both album and songs. So as you can see, we have this album as well as this song. So we can actually pass. Uh, so we can pass multiple files. Uh, uh, this also, if you go and have a look at the constructor of file system XML application context, this also takes the um, uh, takes the variable arguments or varags, and so we can pass as many number of XML files as you want, and uh, Spring will make sure they are loading one after another. We are now end of this module. Uh, in this module, we have covered uh, POJOs. Uh, and we have configured POJOs through XML bean definition file. And then we have covered application context. We have also seen a uh, constructor and setter based injection. We have seen the different type of uh, uh, injections, uh, constructor injection, where we are actually passing the constructor args. In constructor arguments, we have seen different types, uh, the name, index, and type. We have also seen the setter based injection, where we have actually the properties uh, through which we are setting the different properties, as well as the uh, values and reference types. And then we talked about bean collaboration and imports. So we have seen how beans are referring to each other uh, in order to work or in order to communicate. Then we have also seen how uh, we can actually refer uh, beans in some other configuration file and we can import different beans. And then we have also seen uh, collections, how exactly we can create a list, uh, set, map, properties, or uh, a list of strings, list of different reference types. We then uh, talked about inner bean, where actually uh, instead of referring to a particular bean in some other uh, place, we are actually creating the bean uh, inside the property. And then we talked about depends on, we have seen uh, at times we want to be more explicit and we are providing that, that explicit information through depends on uh, in the bean definition and we are hi highlighting uh, to spring that uh, what all bean uh, or current bean is depending on. And then lastly, we talked about lazy initialization. and we have seen like we can actually uh, instruct Spring not to load the bin uh, at the time of container creation. We can ask the uh, Spring container to uh, load the bin as and when we request for it. Welcome to this module of Spring Core series. In this module, we are going to talk about auto wearing. We'll see how uh, Spring beans can be configured automatically by Spring IOC container. So let's understand what is auto wearing. Uh, so so far uh, we have manually managed the dependencies between the objects, right? So we have seen we have created our Spring Bean definition files and we have created different uh, different bins and we have seen all these bins are actually uh, managed by uh, ourselves. So whenever there is a uh, dependency, basically, so we have explicitly passed those dependencies. We have uh, used the reference attribute to pass those dependencies, and it is explicitly managed by the application developer. However, Spring can automatically manage these dependencies for us by inspecting the container. And this process is known as auto wearing. So as that is like sort of wearing the beans uh, based on their dependencies. Right? Auto wearing can significantly reduce the need to specify properties or constructor arguments. So we have seen um, whenever we have uh, uh, this particularly this person class and address. So that address is a dependency uh, in person class. We need to whether we use constructor arguments or we use the uh, setter based injection in both the cases we need to manually use the rep uh, attribute and provide the bean reference now think of a complex scenarios where we have uh, multiple objects and we 
we, we can have multiple uh, dependencies. So each of those we have to do it manually one after another. And that can be pretty uh, cumbersome to do. Now auto airing can also update a configuration as objects evolve or they grow or they change. So for example, if a new dependency to a class is added, the dependency can be satisfied automatically without a need to modify the configuration. Now we have understood what is auto wiring. Let's try to understand what are the different types of auto wiring modes provided by Spring IOC container. Uh, so there are four different types uh, of auto wiring available. The first one is no auto wiring at all. So this is the default configuration and this is what we have seen so far. So bin references must define by reference uh, rep elements. Um, if you have uh, recall the example which we have used earlier, uh, we have actually referred the dependent um, beans through the ref attribute in the uh, constructor argument or the properties. This is the default configuration. So by default, Spring is not uh, coming into play to uh, do the auto wearing for us. It expects us to uh, provide the appropriate reference and accordingly, Spring will find out the proper dependencies and it will inject. The next type of um, uh, auto wearing type is by name. So as the name suggests, it is uh, auto wearing by the Spring bean name. So auto wearing by property name. Spring looks for a bean with the same name as the property that needs to be auto wired. For example, if a bean definition is set to auto wire by name and it contains a property called master, then uh, that is basically you will have a set master method. Spring looks for a bean definition named master and uses it to set the property. The third type of auto wiring mode is by type. So it's by that bean type, bean class type. So uh, let's say property, uh, so it lets a property to be auto wired if exactly one bean of the property type exists in the container. If more than one type exists, this type of auto wiring is not going to work and uh, the auto wiring will fail. The last type of auto wiring mode is by constructor. So uh, it is similar to by type, but this is uh, mainly for constructor. Again, in this case also, if the constructor is having more than uh, uh, one at, uh, attribute of similar type, this particular auto wiring is not going to work. Now we have understood what is auto wiring and the different types of auto wiring. In this uh, video, we are going to see the demonstration of the auto wiring types. In this particular video, we are going to look into the first one, which is no auto wiring at all. So as we have discussed, let's quickly recall, uh, we have auto wiring, four auto wiring types. One is auto wiring as no, no auto wiring, then auto wiring by type, then auto wiring by name, and then the last one is auto wiring by constructor. So let's uh, head over to Spring Tool Suite. Here I have already uh, created, uh, since this, is this example we have seen earlier, uh, we'll just quickly go through how exactly we are referencing different beans. What we have done is um, I have created a new new package in that I have created two classes. One is address class. So in address we have unit name, street, area, and pin and respective getters and setter methods as well as the two string method. Similarly, I have created the person class. In uh, person class, I have created the person ID, person name, and uh, here is our reference dependency, which is address. And we have our getters and setters as well as the two string method. Then finally, I have uh, created this uh, XML configuration file which is here. In this, what we have done is we have created the address bin first and we are passing some uh, normal properties, the unit name, street, add area and pin code. So this is pretty simple uh, uh, bin definition. And then we have this person class. In the person class, um, person bean, we are referring to the person class and we are passing the person ID, person name. And then here we are using the address. So address is uh, a reference type. So we are actually using the ref attribute uh, to call the address bean. Uh, this, is, uh, this is something which we have seen earlier uh, multiple times in our earlier video uh, um, uh, courses. Uh, in this case, uh, as you see, we are not using any auto wiring at all. So Spring is uh, just relying on what we have provided. It is not putting its own intelligence anywhere here. It is just seeing, okay, there is a reference of address and it is looking for this address um, bean. And with that, it is actually injecting it. So in case, um, uh, in this case, again, I have created the main class also. I am just loading this class for the XML application context with application context auto wire no. 
and then uh, I'm just looking for the person bin and printing it. If I execute this, we'll be seeing the person information, so which is here. So we have person ID, person name, and then the address which got injected by um, uh, Spring because we have mentioned that reference address to be injected and we are actually getting that unit information unit name street and area as well as bin code so uh, this is something which you have seen earlier so there is nothing new about it for the sake of completeness i just demonstrated this in the last video we have seen auto air as no and in that particular example we have uh, we are passing that reference by ourselves in this video we are going to look into how we can do auto air by name so uh, let's create uh, another package so i'll take this uh, previous package as a reference and we'll just rename it to auto wear by name so uh, the class name uh, the classes will be uh, same which is uh, the person class and the address class so person class it is as is we have id name and address and the associated getter setters and the two string method similarly for address as well uh, we have uh, mm, address information unit name street area and pin and the associated getter setters and two string method now uh, let's uh, copy this as well and he here it will rename it as by name So uh, we'll do some change here now. So as of now, we are not using any auto aware. So Spring has no information that it needs to auto aware. Um, so basically, uh, that's the reason it's not doing any auto airing. Uh, we are just passing the address uh, reference by ourselves. Let's uh, do two changes. One is auto aware. So auto aware as by name. So this is one thing, and um, we'll just remove this uh, property. So that we want, uh, since we have actually asking um, auto wire by name, so we want uh, Spring to find the um, address uh, being and injected for us, right? So uh, that's the only change we are going to do now. So uh, let's uh, in instantiate this uh, our uh, class path XML application context with this uh, XML configuration file name. Let's go to main class. And I'm going to change uh, the previous one with this one. Now, if we execute this, we should be seeing the same outcome what we have seen earlier. And here it is. So, if you see, we can still verify the person. Uh, person ID is this uh, person ID name address. So, even though if you uh, if you look at uh, this particular uh, bin, we there is no information about address provided um, in the person bin. But uh, since it is an auto air by name, uh, Spring is actually looking for the address and then injecting it into the person bin. So how it is doing? It is do doing by name. So if we go by uh, go to our class here, we have a uh, property called address, and uh, here we have one um, bin name address. So there is a match uh, Spring is finding, and then uh, with, uh, since it is by name, so it is actually injecting this. Uh, let's say uh, we just change it to address one. We have given the address bin as um, that address name as address one. So there is no matching bin. Uh, person uh, has a property of address, but there is no matching bin in our uh, Spring IIC container. So uh, now what will happen in this case? Any case? So Spring is not going to throw any exception. Uh, since it is a setter injection, uh, it, it will just simply unable to set that uh, address property here. And uh, it will just left it as null. So let's verify this. So if you see, uh, this time address is appearing as null because um, there is no matching bean pound. If we go back to our uh, uh, previous uh, slide, we can see. So uh, here, uh, it's clearly mentioned in uh, Spring documentation that Spring looks for a bean with the same name as the property that needs to be auto wired. So this line is important. Spring looks for a bean with the same name as the property that needs to be auto wired. In this case, since there is uh, no bean found, uh, Spring is unable to do the auto wire. If we change this to address, um, it will definitely be able to do it again. So this time it's coming as uh, proper address. 
in the previous lecture we have seen uh, auto air by name we have seen how spring is looking for beans with the property uh, name if there is a match found it is auto airing if there is no match found uh, spring is not setting it uh, that property or property and leaving it as null in this particular uh, video we are going to look into auto air by type so uh, we'll again uh, copy this package and um, we'll uh, make so make it as by type so the class information uh, classes will be uh, same address class main and person and uh, we'll again take this uh, old spring uh, configuration file and we'll rename it as by type so by name uh, let's uh, go go to our by type uh, so this is our um, configuration file now and uh, we will leave everything as is because we want again the same address property to be auto wired by spring um, so we have this address being anyway available here and uh, only thing is missing is the address property um, here we are not explicitly uh, referencing it we want spring to find it for us but this time we will not do by name this time we will do by type so we are doing by type and uh, that's it so this is the only change uh, when we are using um, for auto air by type and um, let's go back to our main class and uh, change that xml configuration file so this time xml configuration file will be by type application context xml by type now if i uh, initialize if i try to execute it we should be seeing the same result so uh, again we can verify we are actually getting the same exact same uh, out outcome what we have seen in earlier two uh, uh, auto air types as auto air know also we have seen the same thing auto air by name also we have seen the same thing uh, now uh, there are there is a catch mm. so in case of auto air by name if there is no um, appropriate bin found for that particular property uh, spring is leaving that particular property as null um, but here uh, let's say here uh, how it works is uh, spring spring will now look for a type so for example address type so it will look for address type bin in the container but one uh, important um, consideration here is you have to make sure there is only one type of that bin exist in the uh, container so let's say um, if i have two addresses for some reason i have another address and address 2 is present right um, now uh, now there will be a problem because since uh, we are trying to auto air by type and there are two addresses found address 1 address 2 and both the type matches to the address type now spring will not be able to um, uh, find which address it needs to inject to our person class so spring will throw an exception so let's try it out and check so as as you can see we are getting no unique bin definition exception so this exception comes whenever there is more than one type available and spring is unable to determine which one to pick so if you uh, uh, you see the error message uh, it's clearly saying our address uh, uh, bin type address expected single matching bin but found two address and address two so it's unable to um, resolve which one it needs to inject that's the problem with um, by type if we if we use if you are using by type we have to ensure there is only one type and one important property here is uh, when you are doing by type uh, the name on the bin name doesn't matter i can give address 1 address 2 it doesn't matter it is going to work because we are uh, doing a lookup for uh, by type so uh, in this case the address class type that is what uh, matters not the name we can give any name here but uh, in case of by name the ad uh, the bin name uh, should be exactly same as of what we are using in the property name of our um, actual bin in the previous video we have seen uh, auto air by type in this particular video we are going to look into auto air by constructor so um, let's copy uh, one of these packages uh, and then uh, change it to constructor so we have uh, renamed our package as constructor we have our address class uh, we have our person class we will do some changes in the person class we don't want person to be uh, a setter based injection this time we are going to change it to constructor 
so i'll add uh, the constructor using fields and select all of them and generate the constructor so we have now this time the constructor no getter setters uh, address class remains uh, as is we are not making any change and yeah, let it be get, uh, with getter setters only uh, this time we want to show that constructor based uh, auto wiring uh, let's create uh, copy one of uh, the XML file, previous XML file, and change it to constructor. So here is our um, new XML file. I close the rest of this. Uh, we'll make some changes instead of property. These will be constructor arguments, and um, this will be a constructor argument. So we are providing two constructor argument uh, and the third one is the address one if we have a look at our constructor class uh, constructor here uh, in person class we have address as um, uh, as one of the property but this property we are not passing we want uh, spring to find out and uh, do it for us. Another change will be the class name is now different uh, package is different so it's constructor dot person and similarly it's constructor dot address. As we have changed the package so we have to make this change and here we will be using constructor so that's the only change here now if we uh, go back to our main 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 class here we have to change instead of by type we have to change as constructor so now if we execute this and uh, try to see the output so we can see uh, Spring is uh, able to identify and uh, doing the same thing which it has done in earlier cases but this time it has done for the constructor. So um, the constructor argument which we are passing here, constructor argument Spring is able to find out and, um, uh, and injecting it. Uh, let's say what if we don't have uh, our address bin at all, what will happen? So you could see if there is no address bin, uh, Spring is throwing exception because the constructor. If you um, uh, so no uh, no qualifying bin of type uh, address available expected at least one of one, but um, which qualifies as outward candidate. So uh, it is giving an explicit message that uh, that um, other bin is not present, so it can't do the auto wiring. Just put it back. So uh, this we have we have seen uh, how exactly auto air by constructor uh, works. In our previous videos, we have seen uh, Spring auto wiring. We have seen how Spring does the auto wiring uh, through different mode. We have uh, first we have seen uh, no auto wiring. We are doing explicit wiring, and then we have seen auto wiring by name. We have seen auto wiring by type, and then lastly we have seen auto wiring by constructor. Uh, so uh, though auto wiring looks. Uh, mm, fine and it looks uh, that it can do uh, spring can do many things for us um, under the hood uh, sometimes auto wiring um, can uh, can be a problem as well so for example um, auto wiring is not supported for primitive types so integer uh, uh, double all those primitive data types uh, it can can't be auto wired second thing is auto wiring is less exact than explicit wiring so when we are doing auto wiring we are actually letting uh, uh, we are actually leaving the control on Spring IOC container to do uh, the right thing for us, but at times it can go wrong as well. And um, so it's better uh, to do explicit wearing. So in that case, we'll have uh, the control on uh, the application developer. We know what exactly we are doing. Third thing is multiple bin definitions within the container may match the type specified by the setter method or the constructor argument while doing auto wearing. We are now end of this module. In this module, we have seen auto wiring. We have discussed what auto wiring is. We have then uh, seen auto wiring types. We discussed uh, auto wiring by name, by type, and constructor. We had then uh, seen a uh, demonstration of each one of them. We have seen uh, firstly the auto wiring uh, by type, and then by uh, name, and then constructor. We had also discussed um, that uh, uh, if we don't mention any auto wiring, how exactly as an application developer we need to. Uh, specify the bean references we then talked about auto wiring uh, drawbacks um, what all problems that auto wiring has so um, we are end of this module i'll see you in the next module welcome to this module of spring course series uh, in this module we'll talk about java based configuration 
in our previous module we have discussed uh, how we can configure bean through xml based configuration we have seen um, with the bean tag and we have configured many beans um, uh, with the different uh, bean uh, properties or construct arguments we have done out wiring but all we have done through xml based configuration but slowly um, xml based configurations uh, the usage of xml based configuration is reducing and uh, applications are moving towards annotation based configuration so that mm, we do not need to maintain uh, different xml files and we can have 100% java code so what all we will cover in this module uh, we will see configuring beans but this time with uh, um, java annotations not through uh, the xml based configuration We'll then have a look uh, at component scan annotation, how Spring handles um, uh, it can scan for um, the component through add component scan annotation. We'll then have a look at add configuration and add bean annotations. We'll also have a look at add component, add configuration, add service, and add repository annotations. We'll further discuss about constructor and um, uh, setter based injection, but again with uh, Java based annotation configuration. We'll talk about auto wiring again and we'll talk about uh, the add depends on annotation. We'll see add primary, add qualifier, add scope, add lazy annotations. So, we in our previous disc, uh, module, we have not covered uh, bean scope. So, in this uh, module, we're going to look into spin, uh, that's bean scope as well. We'll then uh, see import con importing configurations. So, in our previous XML uh, video, if you, re if you recollect, we have actually uh, importing resources. We had taken that uh, instrument and artist example where we're importing that instrument uh, which is there in a separate bin definition file. So, in this case, we'll see how we can actually import configuration uh, when we are actually using Java based annotations. So, this module also will be uh, quite uh, heavy. There are so many things to cover. So, let's get started. In this video, we are going to look into Java based configuration. So previously we have seen uh, how we can create a spring bean definition file and that adds our uh, configuration or metadata file to the spring uh, IOC container and spring IOC container uh, reads the bean definition provided uh, inside that uh, XML file and it basically uh, loads the bean um, as, an, as the definitions are provided. Now in this uh, uh, particular module we are going to look uh, uh, how we can configure bean definition uh, in a java file in a java based configuration file instead of um, xml based configuration file so uh, i'm i have opened uh, intellij idea so for java based configurations we'll be using intellij idea so so that we'll have exposure to both the ids uh, in the previous uh, module we have seen uh, how we are using spring tool suite and then in this module uh, we are going to uh, see through how we can use uh, intellij idea uh, now, um, what we are going to do in this uh, particular video is we will be creating a configuration class. So, this will be uh, similar to what we have done in XML uh, based configuration. So, the application context XML acts as the um, metadata file or the configuration file for uh, when you are using XML based configuration. So, uh, and in this case, uh, the configuration uh, class which will be writing Spring uh, configuration class that will be our metadata file. Within that, we will have different beans, bean definition. Uh, so let's uh, get started. So in this case, what we're going to do is we'll write a um, simple um, that plain old Java object POJO. We'll be writing one product class. In that, uh, we'll have uh, some product ID, product description, and we'll have getter setters and what we have done earlier. And then we'll have a configuration class. Uh, that configuration class uh, will be a holder of all our beans. So and then we'll create a new bean. And then uh, we'll be writing our main class. In that main class, we'll be using um, a different type of uh, XML uh, context and then try to load the mm, beans and try to access those beans. So let's get started. Um, I have opened um, uh, IntelliJ IDEA. So we have done a setup uh, of IntelliJ IDEA. We have created a Maven project in our setup uh, video. So I've just, we'll just start from there. So uh, just a quick recap. What we have done is uh, we have created this Spring uh, project here, uh, uh, Maven project. In that we have uh, all those uh, definitions, um, uh, dependencies provided. Uh, if we open the POM XML, we can actually verify we have two dependencies, Spring Core and Spring Context. The same dependencies we are using in our earlier module as well. Uh, let's um, so uh, let's get started. So I'll just create a new package. Um, we'll give this as a name of uh, Java Config, Java Config, and then uh, base. Uh, let's create another uh, class um, person. Or in this case, let's take uh, we said product. So, product will have private uh, string uh, product ID, 
and then we'll have private string uh, product description let's create the getter setters and let's create the to string method so our um pojo is ready now let's create the configuration class so we'll name it as product configuration this product configuration class will have this configuration annotation so once we put the configuration annotation this is an instruction for spring that okay this is a configuration class and uh, uh, it will have the bean information in it now uh, let's create our bean public um, product product and let's return a new product or let's create a product first is there is in data setter so product product equal to new product and then let's product dot set product id let's say it's a 456 and then product uh, dot product uh, set product description as well uh, let's say it's a laptop and then return the product so uh, if you see you have created the method but this method has uh, has no meaning at the moment because it's not a bean definition so to make it a bean definition we have to make it as a we have to put this annotation at bean annotation which makes it a bean uh, as a bean right now let's create another uh, configure another file now which will be our main method so main in that will be actually having our main class now uh, one important thing here is uh, we uh, will be using a different application context application context application context equal to neo annotation config application context and we will be passing our product configuration file to it product configuration dot class and then we will try to um, we will we'll print our um, product that's it so we have used a uh, different type of application context here uh, in earlier videos you have seen the class path xml application context which used to load xml based configuration file from class path we then also have seen uh, file system xml application context which actually loads xml based configuration from anywhere in the file system or from uh, from the different from different urls in this case since we are not dealing with any xml file so there is no uh, xml based application context we are using annotations here so we are using annotation config application context so this particular application context is for um, uh, loading annotation based um, uh, um, application context so uh, so uh, if you see the documentation it's saying create a annotation config application context deriving bean definitions from the given annotated classes and automatically refreshing the context so uh, that's the use here mm, if we execute this one so it's running actually doing the build at the moment um, we can actually uh, see what it is building it's trying to run all these uh, all these things and at the end it will give us the output so you can see it's actually able to find out the product information product id product description uh, let's say I I have um, I can actually have many more uh, such uh, beans. Uh, let's say I have uh, for example let's say I have address class which we have used earlier. In address class let's say I have a private string uh, um, unit and private string uh, straight. Let's keep it simple. We'll keep this only and then alt insert. We'll use constructor this time and uh, let's say we have alt insert to string as well right so this is there only thing you have to do is in our configuration file we have to create this uh, new bean public uh, um, address address and then we can actually return a new address new address let's say you need to use you need 87 and uh, next parameter was uh, the street it is it will be like uh, let's say some george street
so that's it and again we have to, to make it as a uh, valid spring bean we, ha we have to give this annotation that's it now spring uh, can actually look for this address um, class and create this address bean for us if we go back to our uh, main class uh, main class and now this time let's say try to get um, address bean so we can actually get address dot class if we uh, again execute this we can see uh, it will be printing the address information as well so at the moment it is doing the build and once the build is done it will be printing the output so in this case the output is again uh, address so address in information is printed so we have seen we can configure as many as beans we want but uh, the same similar way we were doing in the xml configuration file but in this case we are going to uh, do all these things in our uh, in this our uh, product configuration files we can have this configuration file give the configuration notation and keep uh, adding as many beans as we want in our earlier video we have seen how we can actually configure spring configurations um, with add configuration annotation as well as we have seen how we can configure beans with add bean annotation we have also seen in our earlier uh, module that how we can actually let spring auto add the beans for us in this module um, this particular video lecture we are going to uh, have a look at auto weird annotation how we can uh, how spring can do the auto airing for us uh, but in this time with add auto weird annotation we will not use uh, any xml configuration so let's head back to our uh, uh, IntelliJ idea so here uh, i'll create two uh, classes uh, one will be our user service class one will be our user repository class so let's create a new package first so in this time I'll write auto where base. So let's create a class called uh, first user repository. User repository. So it's a um, uh, class. It's a repository class uh, in traditional Spring repository class, which provides uh, some persistence uh, methods. Let's uh, let us provide public void save uh, just to keep this class simple i'll not add anything else and we'll just um, print uh, one message called saved so this is basically uh, doing the uh, work now let's create uh, another class called user uh, service in user service we will have a uh, same method public void save and um, it will be doing uh, it, it just need a uh, user repository class okay and it will be using user repository dot save so uh, these two classes we have created so user service is normally a service class so that class this class provides some sort of services to its users and user repository is the uh, backing uh, repository which provides which connects to the underlying a repository it could be um, any type of uh, persistent storage so uh, in this case right now is a repository will definitely be null uh, so um, we don't uh, want is a repository to be created by us we want to auto add it so we'll do auto add that's it so we'll do auto add so if we do uh, if we use this uh, and does not add auto add spring will ensure that um, it actually inject while creating this user service it will find that uh, there is this particular property that needs to be auto weird now uh, let's create our uh, user configuration so this is the configuration class mm. and uh, in this class we are going to create two beans our first bean is public uh, user repository class and it returns new user repository similarly we are going to create user bean class as well uh, sorry user service class as well So these two beans are ready and uh, let's try to access so we'll create our main method here 
in main method we will try to um, access the application context which will be again since you're using annotation it will be annotation application context and we are supplying this user configuration dot class now uh, we'll ask the application context to provide us the user service bean and then uh, we will call our save method here right so if i try to execute this we'll be seeing that saved um, which we have uh, which uh, is returned by our uh, user repository class so user repository save method is returning save but now uh, let's revisit what we have done so we have created our uh, user repository class this is the basic class which just provides the save method and then we have user service class user service class is um, again calling that user repository save method and we have actually uh, telling that we need this user repository property here in the user service class then we have user configuration user configuration this is a um, plain uh, configuration uh, java configuration file and we are instantiating these two bins but note that we know where we are actually um, passing that user repository to user service uh, in this configuration so spring is actually doing it for us and it's ensuring that we are um, this uh, user repository is available here um, in our user service class so that we uh, once we are required here we can get it now uh, if we go to the uh, auto add annotation so it has one element called required and by default it's set to true so that means that uh, this uh, user repository uh, needs to be present in the spring irc container otherwise spring will not be able to create user service class because in order to create the user service class spring requires this user repository to be available so uh, let's uh, by default as it uh, mandatory uh, that uh, it's uh, required equal to true so we need not do anything uh, just to verify uh, this let's uh, for time being let's comment out this bean so uh, spring will not be creating any user repository in spring as a container and if we this time if we try to run it we should be seeing some exception and here it is so um, if we verify this exception again it is saying no such bean definition exception no qualifying bean of type uh, uh, or core java config of user repository available because uh, spring is not able to auto aware so it's um, throwing an exception now uh, we can uh, we can actually what we can do in this case is let's say user repository this property is optional we if it is available we will use it if it is not available we will not use it so in this case what we will do we can make required equal to false if we do that then we have to ensure that uh, we have we are doing a check so if uh, we'll just write objects dot um, is null user repository uh, then basically we will let's print a message here and uh, no repository is provided and we'll just return from here so this time spring will not throw in any exception it will uh, try to it will just try to uh, uh, print this message and come out so since we have made record equal to false we are just relaxing um, uh, the condition here uh, if since user repository is not available it is not being injected and it's simply seeing in our null check we are um, checking it and we are just printing this message and coming out so if you are marking as required equal to false we have to make sure that uh, anywhere we are using this object we have uh, we are actually doing appropriate null check uh, otherwise there can be null pointer exceptions now this is one of the uh, cases uh, let's say i i don't want to do a direct injection like this you can uh, i can i want it to be um, through a setter injection so alt insert again um, we can write a setter method here and we want the setter uh, method to be auto aired so uh, still uh, spring can do that only thing in this case we have to uh, uncomment this so what we have done is instead of this uh, property to be auto aired we are doing the auto aired by the setter method so we have created a setter method for this user repository class and we are auto wiring this now uh, if we uh, we have uncommented here as well so that this bin will be created and spring can actually 
uh, auto add this user repository property because of this auto add annotation, annotation is provided in the user repository method. So if we execute this time, we should be seeing the saved again. So we can actually see that there is the saved is again getting printed because uh, it's uh, it is able to uh, auto add this property. So uh, that's pretty much about uh, this auto airing. So we can uh, we have verified that um, we could actually use uh, auto air here uh, as part of the property. We can do auto air as part of auto uh, auto air setter method. We can even do auto air uh, as part of constructor as well. Okay. So uh, that's one of this use case. Uh, now uh, let's go back and try to do something uh, different. Uh, we will do auto air dot. Uh, we'll create a new package. auto air dot collection okay this should be uh, outside okay so we are using auto air dot uh, collection here uh, now um, what we will do is uh, what we have seen here is when there is one property spring is injecting those properties uh, that property that property but let's say i have a list of uh, of the properties then how we can actually do that how how we will get that list is spring um, will be able to will will spring be able to uh, auto air those many prop those uh, list or array um, property so let's see that in the next video in the last video we have seen how we can auto air a particular property in one of the uh, class and we also discussed that in case we need a list any collection java collection how we can um, how uh, this being will be able to auto air uh, those or not so uh, let's have a look uh, uh, of these in this video so in this clear in this case what i'll do i'll just first close all of this now let's first create a product uh, so this will be our uh, product class okay so the idea here is uh, we have list of products we will be having uh, this product module and we will be creating multiple products and what you want we will be having a product viewer class in product viewer class whatever products is there in the uh, container we want to view all of them okay so let's see how we can achieve this we have private string uh, product id and uh, we have private string product description so uh, let's keep it simple i'll just create a constructor also i will create the two string method with all these two so this is simple pojo um we have a product product id product description and that's it now um i want to have a product viewer class In this class, I want to have an array of products. Product, and I will say products. What I want to do is public uh, void view products. So this is a uh, simple. Here, what we will do is we will uh, we'll go through each product, and we'll just print out the product information. So we are doing this here. Now uh, let's create the configuration class and create couple of products. This is our product configuration class and here we will be creating couple of products. So first let's say public product. Um, we will give this as a uh, product one and we'll return new product let's say product id is one and product description is laptop and this is going to be a bin so that spring can create this bin and let's say we have few more products let's say we have four products now and we have product 2 which is let's say bike id should be 2 here and then uh, let's say we have another product called bike uh, let's say this is car and let's say this is simple product called mobile 
and this will be product id as 4 this will be product id as 3 this method will be 3 and this method will be 4 so what we have done is we have created four simple four different products product 1 product 2 product 3 and product 4 and they have their ids and their uh, description now what we want is uh, we want um, to view these products right so let's come uh, create our main class since main class is common everywhere i'll just uh, copy these two lines So in, prod, uh, in our main class, we will be creating our main method and here we don't want these two. So we want our own product configuration and what we will do is we will get the, uh, we don't want to get the product class, we want to get the product viewer class and then we want to call view products. So if I run this right now, I am going to get exception. So let's check. We got exception here because there is uh, okay. So this exception, there is no product viewer. Okay, so we have not created our product viewer class. We have to create product viewer bin first. So public. product viewer product viewer and let's return a new return new product viewer right so we created even though we run this uh, probably will not get an exception but will not will not have anything to print okay we got exception because uh, that's uh, this particular product in product viewer this is empty right so we have not auto wired this so far so uh, that's the reason we are not uh, there is no product and we are getting no pointer exception here so let's do a auto wire auto wire first and let's see how it changes so we, as you can see it is actually printing all the products product one product two uh, product three and product four we didn't do anything we didn't create the product list here what we had done is we had in our configuration file we just created the products product one product two product three and product four and we have created these uh, many uh, uh, products what spring has done since we are actually auto wearing it we are auto wearing the in product viewer class we are auto wearing all our products spring has actually gone ahead and uh, it is actually finding all those types and putting into this array and uh, we have access to this array and we are printing this now let's say uh, instead of array uh, this is a list list of product even if it is a list spring will be able to still figure it out so for list as well we can uh, we can see uh, it is uh, providing the list of products product id product um, 1 2 3 4 and in case of set if it is a set uh, we have set of products so uh, it is able to handle set as well so 1 2 3 4 and it is giving all the products now let's say uh, the more interesting let's say we have a map and we have string comma string comma product will this work any guess and in this case the iterator uh, we can't iterate like that so we have to take uh, for uh, products dot entry set and we are going to print our product okay product dot get key and let's print here itself so that we will know okay 
right so let's execute and see what happens so we are actually getting the product information here we are actually getting the product key which is our product one product two product three and product four and our actual product information which is product actual product id and uh, product description combination now what happens here is we are actually um, spring is actually getting all the products since it is a button since this is a map it needs a key as well so what it has done is it has taken those uh, uh, method names so product one two three four if you uh, if you go back and check our product configuration class this is the name we have given product one two three four and spring has actually created those as the maps key right now let's uh, uh, do some changes here uh, one uh, one point is by default when we when spring um, is creating this bin uh, it is actually creating this bin with this particular name whatever is the method name by default with the method name spring will be creating this bin uh, in case of XML based configuration, we provide the ID or name and accordingly the bin name is uh, assigned. But here um, the method name will be bin name. If you want to change this, what we can do is there is, argo, uh, there is a parameter here name. So we can change this. Let's give that uh, appropriate name for now. Laptop and then for this the name is uh, bike. For this the name is car and for this the name is mobile so we have uh, renamed our uh, beans uh, names and now let's execute it again so once executed we can see that uh, names have changed so it is giving laptop by car and mobile and it is providing the product information so in this uh, video we have seen how we can handle uh, the collection types here we can auto add collection types as well we can provide array type we can provide uh, list set or map so all of these collection types work in our last video we have seen that uh, one class can actually declare its properties and then it can uh, uh, provide that at word word annotation for spring to understand and inject the particular type while the spring uh, is creating that bin uh, what we have seen so far is uh, we have one class and uh, there is one property and that particular uh, there is only one uh, particular property is present so for example if we go back to this previous exercise where what we have done is we had other uh, users uh, we have that user repository class and in user repository we have this and user service class and uh, we were actually able to auto add this particular property user repository property but uh, the catch here is there is only one user repository being created in our user configuration class what if i have multiple user repository bins uh, then how spring will understand which user repository to inject so there will be a problem let's quickly simulate uh, this in code and then we'll see how we can solve this so uh, let's create a new package we'll just close all of them okay so in this case we are going to use our previous example vehicle so we have a class called vehicle and this is an abstract class what we're going to do is we it will have one abstract method public abstract um, drive right okay this will be having void so this is it's having only one method this abstract class and this abstract method it has uh, two implementations uh, one is bike extends vehicle and let's do control o and uh, and provide implementation of this we will just write driving bike and then uh, let's create another class called um, car car also extends um, vehicle and let's provide the implementation of drive method we will write driving car so we have uh, bike and car and let's create the vehicle configuration uh, 
uh, it, this is a configuration class and uh, let's create the beans quickly so public vehicle bike and this return new bike similarly let's create the car so public vehicle car return new car okay so what we have done is we have created the vehicle configuration class and we have uh, created our bike a bin we have initialized that and we have also initialized our car class right so these are created now let's create a uh, person class okay so a person will have a vehicle private vehicle vehicle and uh, let's say we are just be, uh, uh, create another method public void drive vehicle and in this we'll do uh, vehicle dot drive right and here let's uh, let us do auto wired okay uh, and uh, let's quickly create the person class as well here so at bin public void uh, public person person and we will return new person now uh, create the main class here we'll have the main method and we'll have application context application context equal to new annotation config application context and here we'll pass our vehicle configuration file uh, class file dot, dot class and then application context dot get bin here we'll ask for person and uh, person dot class dot drive vehicle now if i try to uh, let's execute and see what we are getting here now so we are getting uh, this error which is quite familiar to us now no unique bin definition exception so uh, spring is not able to auto wire uh, that particular uh, vehicle uh, property here in the person class because there are two we it is looking for one but it got two bike and car so even though the person has a uh, vehicle it's not able to auto wire let's uh, see how we can resolve it so when we have such type of issues what we can do is we can use at primary uh, annotation so at primary what it does is it gives uh, whichever bean is declared as at primary primary that will be given uh, preference by spring so uh, let's go to um, this bean and give at primary now if we execute we should be seeing different result so we see we it is giving driving bike so when there is a uh, conflict uh, which want to pick up since we have given primary so the primary is uh, getting preference and the bike is uh, being selected for injection now let's say i want uh, the same thing happen to car at primary is given to car and if i execute this time it will be printing a driving car right so uh, this is the usage of at primary annotation it can actually uh, uh, appear to resolve the conflict when we have multiple types present so in your actual case uh, actual um, uh, real life application as well we can uh, there will be many cases where we uh, we can actually um, assign at primary annotation to or uh, the bean which we want uh, it to be a, um, a primary one right so it can be ha it can happen like you we are expecting um, one particular uh, type to be uh, given priority for example let's say you have uh, uh, some uh, no configuration which is uh, which you are expecting but let's say some other configuration also is present so in that case um, there will be a conflict if uh, so we can assign the one which you want to be getting priority we can assign that with at primary and that will be selected in our previous uh, tutorial we have seen when we have multiple beans of same type uh, there will be uh, there is a 
ambiguity which uh, bean to be injected uh, so spring will have trouble to finding which bean to provide right so in this case uh, we have seen this case earlier and we have seen uh, if there are multiple beans of same type present in the spring rc container then uh, spring throws some exception saying uh, it, it it can't resolve which bean to be injected and it provides it throws no unique bean definition exception one way we have seen is to uh, resolve this ambiguity by uh, providing at primary annotation in while we are creating the bean so earlier we provided at primary annotation in one of these and when there is a conflict or ambiguity spring uh, this at primary annotation determines which bean to be given priority and that particular bean to be injected now another uh, way to do this uh, uh, to resolve this con ambiguity is with at qualifier annotation so at qualifier here we can uh, mention that okay in case you have uh, we have multiple vehicles present we want to give car as a uh, prior car as priority so that car bean qualifies to be attached to this person bean now if this case in this case if we execute we should be seeing car uh, driving car because we have given car as a qualifier bean uh, in this case we have not uh, added any primary uh, annotation anywhere here in our configuration so it's uh, normal beans and we are just we are handling it at our uh, auto wear level similarly if i give as bike i can actually provide um, in this time it will be printing driving bike right so it is actually qualifying uh, able to uh, identify which bean to be uh, injected now uh, there are two uh, important points first point is um, the at primary annotation is always used with at bean annotation so here we can uh, may, uh, qualify uh, which bean to we want to make as primary uh, bean and accordingly um, if there is ambiguity then spring will find out which bean to be uh, given priority similarly at qualifier annotation is always used with at auto word so uh, if there is again some ambiguity whichever bean is given in the qualifier will be given priority in this video we are going to look into how we are, can load beans from multiple locations as we have discussed earlier uh, we are writing our bean definitions in our configuration files but for an enterprise application it will be very difficult to put all the bean definitions in one particular configuration file so there can be multiple configuration files and the beans uh, uh, can refer to each other across the configuration files so how can we um, make this possible how can we segregate those um, beans into multiple configuration files and still refer them as an when we require and this is always a good practice to not to keep all the beans in a uh, common file or a single configuration file we should uh, split these into um, the related module and each module should have its own configuration file or configuration files based on the number of beans we have if we recall uh, in our xml configuration we have done the same thing we have actually segregated uh, the beans into multiple xml uh, bean definition file and then uh, we have imported the bean definition file in the file where we have a dependency right so um, the same thing can be done for uh, configuration java config configuration as well in java based configuration we can have multiple at the rate configuration annotation based classes which will be um, keeping our um, bean definitions uh, let's take a small example here which we have taken for our xml bean definition as well in this case what we'll have is we'll have uh, a bean called instrument this instrument bean will be a part of instrument configuration which will be a separate java configuration file and then we'll have a class another class called artist the artist will be part of another configuration file called artist configuration now artist will have a dependency on instrument the artist should have a bean uh, artist should have an instrument so uh, since these are part of two different configuration files how we can actually make uh, these two bean refer uh, as and when uh, required so how we do we refer uh, instrument from artist class so when we will construct artist class we will be requiring a reference to uh, the 
instrument but instrument is part of some other configuration file so how do we do this so let's head over to our um, IntelliJ and then uh, try to code this and see how uh, we can uh, solve this problem so basically we have uh, two solutions for this problem so let's look at them uh, one by one here I will uh, create a new package we'll just give a multi dot locations okay. let's create the classes quickly I'll create the instrument class first we have uh, instrument name and uh, let's use our constructor first and uh, let's use our two string method okay so we have created our instrument class let's create the instrument configuration we have created our instrument configuration class as well uh, so this is the configuration uh, class i will put add configuration annotation and let's create instrument bin so public instrument instrument and let's return new instrument okay and let's give the instrument a name called piano so we have created our instrument uh, class and um, we have created our instrument configuration so instrument so when we load this particular configuration file this instrument bin will be available in spring ioc container now let's create our artist class and artist class will have uh, definitely have a reference to instrument So we have created the constructor as well as we have created the two string method okay so we have created our artist class now let's create the artist configuration artist configuration is also a configuration file so let's create it as a configuration and now we want to create the artist bin so public artist artist and let's return a new artist but here is the problem now if we go to artist class artist in uh, class enforces a instrument we passed artist should have an instrument now how do we get that instrument reference we don't have it here in this file anywhere so here uh, let's declare a private instrument instrument and uh, so uh, this is one way now what will be the instrument value how do we get it so what we can use is we can use add value annotation and how it works is we can mention the name which we have given there instrument and it, so we'll come to this uh, expression and all these things uh, later but this is one way where we can uh, have this instrument available here so we can uh, we, now we can pass the instrument let's try to run this so for that we need to create our main class and uh, let's create application context application context equal to new class uh, sorry, annotation config application context and application context dot <coughs> get bin and we'll be doing artist dot class and let's print this so this since we have implemented two strings so this will this should print our print the artist information first thing you have to do now the problem here is we have uh, two different configuration files instrument configuration and artist configuration so we need to load both of them here so we'll do inst uh, artist configuration dot class and we'll do instrument configuration dot class now let's run so this is uh, trying to do the build and all so as you can see it is printing artist information instrument equal to instrument and piano so it got the uh, reference now uh, here um, uh, like 
class path XML application context or a file system XML application context annotation config application context also supports multiple locations so you can pass as many configuration classes as you want because it takes a variable argument of class type class of uh, known type now um, there is as you said we have uh, another approach to uh, do this thing uh, the problem here is uh, we don't know how many uh, classes we will be having and um, what are the dependencies now in artist configuration we have a better understanding that what other configuration class we are depending on we are uh, we know that we are depending on instrument configuration which is um, somewhere else so it will be better if we try to uh, do this uh, in each configuration layer instead of uh, simply loading all the configuration files in our main method so what we'll do is we'll just remove this and then um, what we have done uh, in case of uh, our xml bin definition file is in our artist uh, at that application context we had imported import resource and then we have added our instrument configuration file and spin uh, ensure that it has imported that bin and initialize it before it actually start configuring the artist bin same thing we are going to do here we will be doing import and import what will import will import instrument configuration dot class so now this will ensure um, that uh, we have one more uh, configuration class which needs to be imported right and uh, in our main method we have removed uh, the other file and we are having only uh, artist configuration so let's re-execute and see whether it still have the same behavior so it's currently executing and as you can see we have uh, this artist uh, instrument as um, that instrument so artist got its instrument now if we uh, to verify whether it's working let's just comment out this import and see so this time it's going to fail because um, uh, this is there is no instrument so spring is saying that um, it can't parse uh, this property or field instrument cannot be found on object so um, uh, spring is not able to understand this so as uh, one last thing before we um, uh, uh, complete this video this expression so this expression is known as spell spring expression language which is um, being used by um, as a spring so we have a separate module to cover spell um, but at the moment since the instrument is not defined anywhere it's just um, just just one value we don't know what exactly uh, what it stands for and spring can't parse it that's the result is thrown in the exception so uh, we have seen how uh, we can import so it is always advisable to uh, write uh, small configuration files uh, so we, will, we should be creating one configuration file where uh, and put all the beans which are related to that particular configuration file and then if we have any other um, configuration uh, any uh, something which is different and not related maybe we can consider splitting those configuration files into small configuration files and then import them as and when uh, they have the dependencies so far we have seen how to create a bin we have seen we can provide a bin definition in a spring xml configuration file or we can provide a bin definition in x java's configuration file so based on the bin definition spring will create the bin in the ioc container and it will be available for our application to use but uh, there are a few questions when we are creating beans we don't know how many of those beans are getting created in the container because we can uh, refer uh, through get bin to a particular object hundreds of times uh, there is no limit of it also when a bin is getting created how long that bin will be available in the container so all such questions um, are there so these all are uh, defined based on the bin scope in spring there are six uh, scope types available uh, first one is single type this is the default one it scopes a single bin definition to a single object instance for each spring IOC container so this is the default one whenever we are defining a particular spring bin bin there will be only one object created in the spring IOC container and every time we request for that particular object type the same object will be returned this is the default behavior in spring IOC container next type is prototype so this scopes a single bin definition to any number of object instances so this is per request one bin will be returned 
so these two are the one which we will be using in the normal applications uh, in traditional spring application the rest four are uh, related to web based applications and those are related to web application context so the request type uh, this scopes a single window definition to the life cycle of a single http request that is each http request has its own instance of a being created of the back of a single bin definition only valid in the context of a wave aware spring application context the next scope is session it scopes a single bin definition to the life cycle of an http session only valid in the context of a web aware spring application context application uh, it scopes a spring bin definition to the life cycle of a sublet context only valid in the context of a web aware application uh, context and the last one is WebSocket. It scopes a single bin definition to the life cycle of a WebSocket. It only uh, valid in the context of a web average being application context. We are going to look into singleton and uh, prototype ones. And the rest for a request session application and WebSocket are not uh, available um, for the normal uh, application. It is only available in web based application context. Let's see our demo of it. We'll take our uh, one example. What we have done is uh, we have uh, created a product class, uh, that one which we are using in this application. We have a product, product ID, product description. And then uh, we have uh, a shopping cart application, uh, shopping cart class. In that shopping cart, we have a list of products which are available. So the idea is we, ha we are buying products, and those products are stored in a cart. We have a list of products in that we can add products and we can get our list of products. Then we have this product configuration file. Here we are creating uh, multiple products. Uh, we have created laptop, we have created a mobile. And then uh, we have our main class. In this, uh, we are doing a couple of things. First thing, we are initializing the um, our Spring IOC container, and then we are uh, creating our cart, so our shopping cart one, and then we are crea uh, creating a product laptop. We are adding that product to the shopping cart one, and then we are printing the number of products we have, and the products which we are actually available in our cart. Then we are looking for another cart, uh, shopping cart two. We are cre we are uh, creating another uh, one product called mobile, and that mobile we are adding into shopping cart two. So uh, once we, uh, if we execute it now in this current state, uh, we are going to see the following output. We'll be seeing uh, first uh, one product is added, which is laptop, and then uh, the next product will be the mobile. So here is the output. If you see, first product got added, and then the second product. Now uh, this is not uh, this behavior is um, uh, like this because by default. This spring beans a singleton. So what ha is happening here is, whenever we are actually looking for this shopping cart one, so spring are actually returning that cart instance to us, and then when you are next time we are looking for the cart instance, spring is returning the same cart instance to us. Because of this reason, what is happening initially we have added the laptop, and then in the same cart we are adding the mobile. So this behavior is fine. Uh, as the spring uh, bins are singleton by default but in our application uh, perspective this behavior might not be correct because uh, this cart is user specific so whenever we are actually um, let's say user one has requested for the cart and uh, that user one has purchased a laptop so that uh, item is available in user one's cart but when user two is requesting for a cart they should be uh, getting a new cart back they should not be getting the old cart which the user one has because that is uh, that is user one's cart user two needs a new cart so in this case we don't want a uh, singleton behavior we want a prototype behavior in prototype each time we each get bin request should return us a new instance of this cart so uh, what we will do is we will uh, uh, in order to uh, declare this uh, particular cart type as a um, prototype we have to go to our cart uh, class and here we have uh, declared it as scope as initially the scope was uh, scope 
annotation was not added so by default spring has considered a singleton now we are explicitly providing the scope as prototype once we provide the scope as prototype spring will understand okay uh, for each get bin request we need to return a new instance of this cart object now if we uh, execute this class uh, execute our main class we are going to see a different result so here is the uh, result now so in this case what is happening is uh, we are getting product first uh, cart is having product one which is laptop that's fine and when we are the same code when we are asking for second cart we are getting cart two back but in this cart now the old item is not there because it's a new instance or a fresh instance so this instance is um, not have uh, freshly getting initialized and then uh, returned to us and in this case we are getting uh, we are adding the mobile and it's only mobile is there there is no laptop here in this video tutorial we are going to look into depends on annotation in our xml module we have seen uh, the depends on usage so in cases where we have uh, we want to be explicitly define the bin dependencies we can use depends on there can be scenarios where we have one particular bin uh, or the across the bins there might not be direct dependencies so we can't use ref or or auto erging and all those stuff but we want to be explicitly de uh, define the depends on because there might be indirect dependencies let's say in your uh, dependent uh, class you are in initializing some uh, connection or registering some driver database driver so something which we uh, which the depending class has indirectly a uh, dependence uh, dependency in those cases this depends on we can use so let's head over to our um, IntelliJ idea and we'll see how exactly we can use this annotation so I here I have created the same set of classes which we have seen in the XML section we have our init class so this is the class uh, which we want to initialize first and then we have this initialization uh, here we have um, another um, just another bin another class in the uh, in the configuration we have uh, uh, created the initialization bin as well as this um, init bin and in the main class we have our um, annotation config application context and we are trying to access to initialization yeah, but in the configuration we are actually doing something different uh, what we are doing here is we are mentioning that depends on we are depending uh, we are mentioning that initialization this bin is depending on init bin so we want spring to uh, uh, create this init bin first and then it should create this initialization so with this we can um, control the object creation order we can instruct uh, spring explicitly how uh, the dependency is and this depends on uh, it actually if we go back to the uh, array uh, if we So if we go back to this uh, notice array, uh, we can see it takes an array on the value takes an array. We can actually have uh, uh, pass comma separated. Let's say we have uh, some other type uh, in it, and then uh, let's say something process some bin name. So we can just give comma separated bin list, and Spring will make sure all these uh, depending uh, bins are getting initialized first, and then it will initialize the rest of uh, this particular bin. We are now end of this module. In this module, we talked about Java-based configuration. We covered add configuration and annotation, and then we talked about auto arraying and auto arraying collection and array types. We then talked about primary and qualifier annotations, and then we talked about managing multiple configuration. Lastly, we talked about bean scope and depends on annotation. Thank you for watching this module. I'll see you in the next module. Welcome to this module of Spring course series. In this module, we'll talk about Spring Beans in depth. In the previous modules, we have seen a um, couple of things about Spring Bean. Uh, in this module, we are particularly going to look into um, Spring Bean lifecycle callback methods, particularly init method and destroy method. And then we'll be covering uh, post construct and pre destroy annotation. So those are also as uh, lifecycle callback. Then we'll talk about Bean post processor and creating beans with uh, factory methods so static factory instance factory and factory bean so, so far we are creating the beans through their constructor or setter methods
so there are ways of creating beans uh, through static factory methods or instance factory methods or spring uh, bean factory then we'll talk about managing environments with add profile annotation in add profile annotation uh, normally we'll have we can have different set of beans uh, based on the environment so that we can have a profile for production we can have a profile for test environment and we can have a profile for uh, our development environment and then we'll talk about spring aware interfaces so um, we can have our POSOs implementing different Spring Aware interfaces to get uh, information about Spring IOC container. So let's have a look about all of these in this module. In this lecture, we'll talk about Spring Bean lifecycle callbacks. At times, beans need to perform certain initialization tasks before they are fully ready to use. So for example, uh, the beans might need to open a file, allocate some memory, or initializing a database or network connection. So this is the task uh, that might need to be performed before we start using the bean, or start calling the different methods inside the bean. And beans also needs to ensure that corresponding destruction tasks are also invoked before the beans are removed from the container. So if a bean has initialized database connection, it has to ensure that that connection should be closed before the bean is removed from the container. So init method and destroy method, these are the two life cycle, life cycle callback methods which helps us to achieve this thing. So basically if we use init method and destroy method in our bean uh, annotation, we basically instruct Spring to uh, call these life cycle callback methods and uh, invoke those two methods to achieve the initialization and destruction tasks. So let's head over to uh, IntelliJ IDEA and uh, have a look how this works. First, let's create a package. I will uh, call this package as uh, lifecycle. So I have created this package called uh, lifecycle. So what we're going to do is we'll create a small bean definition uh, called file context in that we'll have our init method and destroy method as well as we will have our, uh, have our general uh, method. And then we'll write the configuration for it. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll invoke the init method and destroy method from our bean uh, definition. And then we'll try to invoke um, the, our initialize our bean and try to invoke uh, the bean method. So first I'll create the file context class. So file context class is the bean definition. In that I'll have uh, three methods, init method, destroy method, and uh, our uh, normal method. So let's write the first one. So we are uh, creating our Indian method. I'm also creating the destroy method. So file handler is uh, closed. And let's say we'll have our uh, normal read method. So we have basically created our file context. We'll have our int method, destroy method, and read file method. So read file is the main method where we are basically going to read the file. And this init method will basically ensure that file is a file exists and it is the file handler is initialized and destroy method will close the file handler. Now let's create the uh, file configuration class. So this will be our uh, configuration class. We will have add configuration annotation and let's create our bean definition here. So public file context and uh, file context here we'll return our file context. Okay. So here, uh, so far we have seen uh, in bean that we can actually provide our bean. Uh, if you want to use different name, we can pass the name equal to the new name of the bean. Also, if we go back to go to this uh, bean annotation, it actually provides couple of uh, more things. For example, we'll have uh, init method here, uh, as well as we'll have destroy method here, right? So let's use these two uh, parameters in our bin uh, annotation. So I'll call init method equal to init and destroy method equal to destroy. Okay. 
So, we have uh, provided this unit method and destroy method definition um, to our methods. So, first one is unit method is init and destroy method equal to destroy which which are the methods here as well init and destroy. Now, let us create uh, another class which will be our main class where we will try to initialize this bin and um, use it. So, um, let us create public static void main. I will initialize the container. So, annotation config applic application context, application context equal to new annotation config application context and then we will pass our file configuration class here. So, that uh, it, it can load this bin definition and then let us try to uh, get the bin. So, which is file context dot uh, class here and then let us call the uh, read file method. Now, uh, we are only calling the read file method here and let us run and see what exactly comes out from this uh, execution. So, you can see its printing file handler is initialized and file content is read. So, which is basically our um, init method and the read, read file method. Right. So, we can see that even though we are not calling um, our init method here, Spring is ensuring that uh, as soon as the bean is initialized in the container, this particular init method is invoked and whatever task or execution st uh, statements are given, those are executed inside um, before that bean is uh, fully ready and uh, it is hand over to the application for its usage. Now, one important thing to notice here is Spring did not call the destroy method. Right. So, um, that is the reason we are not seeing any uh, third, uh, third line which is supposed to come here file handler is closed. So, the destroy method is not closed here. This is because the, sp uh, the spring has not destroyed the bean and this bean is uh, still available in the uh, IOC container. Right. So, um, until we close this um, particular application context, this bean will be uh, probably available in the container and spring is not uh, calling the destroy method. Now, let us try to um, close the application context and see whether uh, spring is invoking the destroy method or not. So, in this case what, what happens is um, when spring initialize the annotation config application context or the spring IOC container, it will basically uh, initialize all the beans uh, which are provided uh, in the file configuration or the configuration classes and then uh, the init method or the initialization uh, method whatever is provided will be invoked and then we can actually use the bin. But until we call the rest, uh, close uh, this application context, uh, this destroy method will not be invoked. Now, uh, since in this case we are explicitly closing the application context, so spring is going to destroy the bin. So, as part of destroy, spring needs to ensure that it is calling that uh, destroy callback as well. So, let us run and uh, see um, whether spring is calling the destroy callback as well or not. So, I am re-executing uh, our main class. So, in this time we can see that file handler is closed. That means uh, Spring has actually uh, invoked this destroy method, file handler is closed and um, it is actually destroying the bin. So, uh, this way we have seen how to use our um, init method and destroy method uh, lifecycle callback methods. So, through that we can actually instruct Spring to um, call certain methods once the uh, bin is initialized or the bin is about to get destroyed from the container. In the last lecture, we have seen how to use init method and destroy method lifecycle callback methods to do some uh, additional initialization and destruction tasks uh, once the spring container uh, is initializing the bin. In this lecture, we are going to see how the same thing can be achieved with at post construct and at pre destroy annotations. So, uh, let us head over to IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, before we use um, these two annotations, we have to ensure that we have um, actually added uh, this Java X annotation dependency because these two annotations are uh, in this uh, particular dependency Java X dot annotation and Java X dot annotation API. So, make sure we have added this uh, dependency in our POM XML and um, Maven is uh, putting this jar in the class path. So, once that is ready, uh, let us um, uh, we will make changes in the existing code which we have done in the earlier lecture. Uh, 